That's a lot of people. How you guys doing? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Send me the bill for your plane ticket. <laughs> if you guys think this outfit is ridiculous, you have literally not seen anything yet. Okay, thank you for waiting. What? You know what's up, brother. <laughs> Thank you guys for waiting. I heard Tico told me that people were out, th out there at 6 a.m. waiting. You guys, we're about to watch people play Dungeons and Dragons! What is happening? We are alive at the best moment in history. Right now, there is a stadium full of people basically watching this live on the internet and going, how did Ashley let him wear that? <laughs> okay, let's start. Let's start. Let's get started. <laughs> it is I, your host for the evening, recession-friendly Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> this outfit is what happens when you take shrooms before creating a Saints Row character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys already sound a little warmed up. Yeah, but, 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 just to make sure, because the live shows are all about the audience participation. We're going to go over a couple of rules for that really fast, but before we do, I get paid to be the hype man, so let me get you guys hyped up. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. When I say Terry, you say who? Terry. Terry. When I say Terry, you say who? Terry. Terry. When I say Terry, you say what? Terry. What? Terry. What? God damn. Okay, that's it. Warm up time over. That was easy. Okay, here's the deal. Sometimes people in the Twitch chat don't like Critical Role Live because the audience participates. Those people... <laughs> those people... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just want to say, with all the love and respect in my heart, those people can tune off right now. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm at home watching Critical Role and someone gets a how do you want to do this, I fucking scream! Okay. Here's what you can do. You can laugh. You can cheer. You can scream. You can cry. You can stand up and blow the roof off this place if something cool happens. You can hug your neighbor <laughs> and get drunk after the show if something sad happens. <laughs> and then someone please tweet me the bar that you're at and I will join you. <laughs> With Travis Willingham's American Express. <laughs> Which is currently in my fanny pack. Please do not shout rules. Please do not shout advice. Please do not shout corrections. Please do not shout ideas. 
odds are your ideas probably better than what some of the stuff they're going to come up with is. <laughs> However, part of the thing that is so endearing about this show is watching these nerdy ass voice actors figure out how to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Isn't it? That's what I love about it. Okay, it's just disruptive and it'll light the community on fire and we just like to keep these live things. But that, all that being said, please laugh, please cheer. There's gonna be so much cool stuff. I was supposed to throw these out. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, guys. Who came here from outside the U.S.? Cheer. Wow. Really? For this? Look at me. <laughs> Without further ado, I would like to introduce the cast of a little show we like to call Critical Role. Travis Willingham! Children, shield your eyes. <laughs> I present to you Sam Regal! that brought us all together, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Mercer! The cast of Critical Role, ladies and gentlemen. surreal. 
Ah. Oh, man. Well, um, <laughs> I'm, we're all so excited. You guys can join us tonight, both here in person and out there on the internet. Um, how crazy is it that we live in a world where right now we have people here live in this fantastic theater to watch Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> <laughs> for all, for, <laughs> for all, for all the crazy shit going on in the world, it's nice to know that we can carve some good out of it here tonight together. Um, and in that regard, so we don't keep you too long before we can get to the game that you all came here to watch. Um, let's get to some quick announcements. Oh yeah, very quick. Very good. Um, in fact, I think the, the big announcement, uh, if Liam and Talison want to take that. Yes. Oh, wow. Sure, oh, sure. Go, 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 go. Hey, guys. Oh. So, Talison and I have been working on something for about a year with yeah. uh, around 89 artists from our community. It's been a glimmer in our eye for over a year, oh. and it is almost here. We are going to be releasing in the fall from the Geek and Sundry store a Critical Role art book. about reading. <laughs> love books. We've only told them about the picture so far. We haven't even... You guys know what a crucial part of this community the artists have become, and we have uh, selected uh, 89 artists from many more. There wasn't enough pages were limited. What do I got a page number on here? 200 I don't and uh, 260 something pages. That's right, yeah. yeah. 56, yeah. 256 pages. We have seen it, and it is Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> uh, there, let me see what we There's going to be a deluxe edition and a standard edition. Uh, it will be available for sale in the Geek and Sundry store in the late fall, uh, published by Hunter's Books. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, I'll, and I'll say, regardless of what version, it's, it's going to be treated, uh, when you actually get the book, it's going to be treated as a... Um, artifact from the Cobalt Reserve, so there's going to be, um, there's going to be historical texts and writings from various librarians of the Cobalt Re uh, Reserve chronicling the, the uh, adventures of Vox Machina, including, uh, <laughs> yeah, including a lot of funding stories. Oh God, I'm just going. Yeah, and there'll be some fun Easter eggs in there. There may even be some some background metadata that doesn't really exist anywhere else of things the things yeah. that hide. But this is not your beautiful. basic. Go to the CVS store and get a photo book made. A no. lot of love and care went into this. We've been talking with artists for months and months. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this. We're very <laughs> grateful to the artists who are involved. Some of them are in this audience tonight. Thank you, and uh, we. <laughs> We stood around and looked at a proof of this about a week ago, and uh, I might have gotten a little verklempt. It yeah. is really special. So uh, keep your eyes open for it. Oh, yeah, one last thing. So to keep up to date, I'm sure we'll talk more about it, but you can visit geekandsundry.com slash artbook to sign up for email updates and book previews. So do so. Go, go get this it should be. It should be, when, when, it should be available uh, for ordering sometime in the in late, late fall. Late fall. Yeah. Late fall. So. Late fall. Late fall. Late fall. Late fall. Late fall. Late fall. Uh, thank you guys very much. Yeah, thank you guys for... <laughs> yeah, they, these, <laughs> these two busted their ass on this book. It's and been... Many on. <laughs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> The other quick announcement we have, uh, it's a fun little thing uh, that'll be tomorrow for those of us at Gen Con, and if it goes over well, hopefully at other events in the future, but uh, when we released the Taldorite Campaign Guide, 
Um, the, uh, the original uh, design of the cover was from a POV of Scanlan, and there was some dissent in the community that Scanlan <laughs> wasn't in full display on the cover. Um, so I contacted Aaron Riley, the fantastic artist that worked on our cover, and we got some vinyl decals made. So you can... You can put one of two different pictures of Scanlan on your cover of the book, or any book or art piece you find. Yes. We're hoping to have those in tomorrow. Uh, for those who, who can come to the, the signing, even if you didn't get a ticket for the signing, come to the event anyway. We will have those available to pass out, hopefully. Um, you can pick from the two or grab one of each. It's going to be ridiculous. Uh, one of the two other images. I'm excited to see They're where really Scanlon cool. shows up. They're really great. Yeah. It's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Why is this small man on the Sistine Chapel? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're vinyl. You can remove them without damaging property. <laughs> I think. <laughs> we'll find out. Anyway, without further ado, I think that brings us to the end of our announcements for the evening. And ah! as such, no! oh, go. bring us in to tonight's episode. Let's do it! Of Critical Role. Let's go! Beckner's Amish taint. Uh, <laughs> a little late, but thank you. I appreciate it. A little late. A little late. <laughs> so, last we left off, <laughs> Vox Machina, in their trek to eventually, hopefully, seal and be rid of the threat of Vecna, the Whispered One, and his recently ascended godhood in the Prime Material Plane, found themselves traversing below the sub-ocean volcano of a scald seat, where they managed to water breathe their way through a jug um, uh, traversing the poisonous air within and coming upon the all hammers uh, core anvil on which many artifacts of the founding and beyond were forged there you, def you fought with the forge guardian who was left to see who was proven worthy to utilize its components you defeated it and in doing so Percival with the designs bestowed upon you from Myun and uh, Grog, with the bestowed upon knowledge of blacksmithing, took to the blacksmithy tools and together managed to forge, barely successfully, with a modicum of, of, uh, of structural integrity, the, the three tr uh, prime trammels, hopefully intended to de destroy or at least seal off Vecna's influence on this plane. So, the trammels now complete, each glowing with the runes of each a gifted deity power source. We have one that glows yellow across its runic outside, one that has a sky blue, and one that emanates a black shadow from its runes, representing each deity that bequeathed an element of their power onto these trammels. You then decided to have Scanlan drop his magnificent mansion and uh, decide where your next journey was as you all entered the mansion, preparing for an evening's rest or otherwise. 
We left off with you now, away from the heat of the volcano, plotting your next directional path. So, Vox Machina, what do you want to do? That's a great question. Huh. <laughs> Let me see those tremors. Uh -huh. Who has the tremors? Well, I do. Well, I just want to look at them. Like all of them or just one? Just all of them. Fucking hell, shit balls. There you go. That's it. I just want to hold them, really. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're real big, right? They're like a person. They're, yeah, they're pretty long. Like this. I'm cradling them. Yeah. Surprisingly, though, due to the, the platinum's design, they're not in, as heavy as you expected, whether it be the enchantment or the material that it was made from. They're, I mean, they're still heavy for you, uh, Vex, because mm. your strength is pretty shitty. But you, <laughs> can, can I tell which one is... Um, Seven strength? Which god? Yes. Uh, the, the one that glows yellow, you feel a, a slight bit of kinship with the blessing you received from Pelor, the Dawn Father. Um, the other two you can differentiate being the sky blue color, probably with Ayun, uh, the Knowing Mistress, and the black, probably representing the uh, Raven Queen. All right, cool. I'm just going to hold on to the paler one. Pass him back. I've got the other two? Yeah. I don't know if anybody else wants to hold them. I just in case like, things go sour, I also fall a nice way to use these, and I slide like one between each of my fingers, and I hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> shink, 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 shink. No. no, that's good. Okay, cool. Cool. back in the bag of holding. Are you still, are you still in Biggin right now? No, no, I've been Biggin for a while. Uh, yeah, yeah he kind was of... only big for the fighting the bullet. All gone. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're pretty oh, wait, wait, by the way, um, I believe you said that if I um, successfully all of these trammels that you had something for me. <laughs> Thought I wouldn't remember, did ya? <laughs> I did say that, I did say that. It's, it's rather personal, though I hope the rest of you can understand. I, I mean, I'm not going to be around for much longer, so I kind of wanted to say, do you want us to step out so you can have a moment? Nah, we'll, we'll find a minute. What? What does that mean? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's awkward. It's, it's not something secret. I'm comfortable talking with in front so of you the group. So you want to sleep? No, we're, we can talk out a plan. I mean, it'll... T tonight before we go to bed. I mean, it could be now. It could be later. You've said too much about it now. I take Grog by talk. the arm and I usher him out the yeah. door oh, yeah. of, uh... Oh, no. This is Jalen's weird. Mansion. This is weird. Outside the mansion? Yeah. You're out the mansion? Aren't we still in the same... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, You're so, going so outside? Just out the front door. Into the inside of the volcano. Is it on fire? Wow. Well, it's certainly very it's hot. <laughs> Why would you go back? It's so oh. hot out there. Fuck it, Grog, let's go downstairs to your uh, yeah, he has room. like 40 room. floors. Okay. We're going down to the wall room with I, the sand pit. Yeah, and I all ignore right. all the cat calling and all the sniping and all the shittiness. These fucking assholes. <laughs> all right, Have fun, you two. You Use protection. <laughs> That's what Grog is for. <laughs> The two of you descend the staircase into the uh, subterranean war room where there you see before you the giant sand pit that is currently adorned with multiple training dummies with armor and weapons strapped to them, uh, magnificently pristine <laughs> based on how many times you've destroyed and or restructured the chamber, but there it lies before you. Big man. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm not going to be around much longer, probably. Or or you're not going to be around much longer, one or the other. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, boy, I've been holding on to a thing for a while now. Uh, Terrian, that scamp, uh, gave me a gift ages ago. Uh, he, he's a, he, he became sort of a fan after I pranked his ass uh, at the beach. Um, he kind of caught the bug, and before we said our goodbyes, he talked to me for a bit and gave me something. You pranked his ass, and he caught the bug. <laughs> it's about suppression. Right, I gotta talk simpler, sorry. Yep. <laughs> That's my mistake. Uh, Terrian gave me a very unique item, and the purpose of it was to fuck with you. Ooh. <laughs> I 
I could say turducken and you people would turn it into sexual innuendo. I don't know what that is. <sighs> anyway, he wanted me to pull a prank on you and, you know, we have a lot of history with that and I held on to it for a long time, looking for a time that felt right and it never happened and sometimes I felt like I didn't want to do that anymore but I don't want to give his, let his gift go to waste. And truth be told, I did a bit of research on it. Um, it, it, it is a, uh, a love potion, Grog. I forgot about that. Lasts about an hour. <laughs> Lasts about an hour, and you know, for a while it was really tempting, and I was just looking for a moment because, you know, that's you and me, that's our history. But then I did some research, and it turns out that it wouldn't have worked on you anyway, because if you want someone to fall in love with you, it has to be on a person uh, who you'd be interested in. And to quote a very handsome dickhead we know, I'm pretty sure you go taco, not hot dog. <laughs> I was right to assume then, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Taco. You know, it's not fair. <laughs> We're not also limited, but that's your thing. That's fine. Mm. <laughs> so I can't even use it on you, but I've got it. And I am going to miss you. I'm going to be gone soon. So I don't even know if we have time. I mean, a lot of us could be dead soon, but I'm, I'm not offering you this, this thing, but I'm offering you an experience. I don't know a lot of big words, but I feel like I need a little bit of clarification. <laughs> I don't know if we have time for this. Yep. Yep. But maybe for old time's sake, because mm -hmm. I love you and I know you love me, yep. and we share this in common. Uh huh. I thought maybe we could prank Scanlan together. Because, let's be honest, that guy would fuck a turducken in front of him. Just for the record, I had no doubts about where that conversation was going. None. You have a deal. I don't know how or when we are going to pull this off, or if you don't make time. Yeah, damn it. Well, it, it could be tonight. Fuck it, it's tonight. <laughs> So here's what I don't have. Right. I don't have a plan. No, me neither. We never have those. So listen, like, maybe while when we're eating some of those shitty salads that this fucking place makes now, or you can just, like, drizzle it on the top, or does he have to, like, drink it with a drink? No, I think he just needs to down it one way or another. It could be mixed with something else. It could be on its own. Who do we, who do we make him fall in love with? Well, originally, I, I was thinking maybe we could have a bet and see which one of us he falls in love with.
And I mean, I know that's a shitty idea, but we have to get up and I go. I fucking love it. <laughs> So that means isolating the gnome away from the others because I don't, he could fall in love with any, no, listen, literally anything or anyone. Yeah, but look, the hunter does not go after its prey in an isolated environment. The hunter finds him in his natural habitat. <laughs> Let him roam free, I say. I'm not sure I know, I know what that means. Me neither. But I, I will carry this baton and follow your lead. Well look, but before the rest of the group starts wondering um, what we're doing in the war room, yeah. let's go back up and whenever your sneaky ass thinks it's appropriate, you just in his drink, how about that? We'll call that plan A. Okay. Plan B will be that you grab his Ass, and I just shove it in. <laughs> got it. Good deal. Plan A, Plan B. Yep. You know those letters. You I know that it. far. I do. I got that far. Oh, yeah. Plan A, All Plan right. B. This is what's happening. <clears throat> and we uh, we head back to the group. Meanwhile, yeah. inside, I'm just so happy to be back in the group. <laughs> I mean, it's been a pretty crazy few days, but I feel like you've all accepted me, and I'm so happy to be back. And I can't thank you enough, it really, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for fully accepting me back. We're really sorry for everything, Scanlon. You know we love you. I love you, too. Yeah. <laughs> Not in a weird no, way. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm married. No. Just friends. Ooh, that would be awkward. That would hey, be what are you awkward. guys talking about? Oh, just how much we uh, love life. Just how we're a happy family. We are, we are close. Thick as thieves, yes. as they say. Who yeah. wants a drink? <laughs> It's a great idea, Grog. Yeah. Invisible servants, bring us the finest vegan wine. <laughs> As a procession of ghostly entities make their way from the far-off kitchen on the basement floor of Scanlon's magnificent mansion, they procure a number of glass bottles containing wine. Of <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's wine. Yeah. It's just wine. It's just wine. <laughs> <laughs> but no added animal fats. You're not wrong. <laughs> Uh, goblets are placed across the tables, uh, drinks are poured, and you all have within your grasp a, a fair nightcap, if you will, before you find rest for the evening. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Scanlon, man, you really, I mean, like, great teamwork today, everyone, really. Yeah, seriously, I'm, I'm so amazed with, with both you and Percy. It, you really pulled through and... We would be lost without both of you. I start examining my fingernails and moving closer to Scanlon. <laughs> you know, I do feel like our teamwork has been getting better, though. Yeah. Like, we've been doing so good at synergizing, you know? Yeah. I mean, sure you know, which works that best. That fight could have gone terribly, and, yeah. and, and we pulled through as a team. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You know what, yeah. though? I know in the past, Vax, I've had my differences with you. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't really? like you charging after that dragon that one time, and we had some, some issues, but tonight I just feel like we're close, and <laughs> you would never do anything to betray me. <laughs> That and with wine all... looks really good. Yeah, I'll, let's take a sip. But first, 
You know, I was thinking about how close we've become, Vax, and I even, I even wrote you a little inspirational song. Oh, shit. <laughs> That is so. Here, let me let me hold your drink. That is beautiful. okay. Sure, you hold my drink. <laughs> this is just a song to show you how much you mean to me <laughs> and how close we've become over these years. Uh. <clears throat> it's a long one. Don't be tired, I'm here to inspire. Before you blow out, let me light your fire. I got no choir, just a gnome and a liar. So listen up to Burt Reynolds, Esquire. Oh, that's gonna fuck me up. <laughs> <laughs> You've got those moves like dagger. You're fast as a cat. You can attack five times. I checked it with Matt. <laughs> You can't be killed, and one more caveat, you get to sit next to the poop on the doink of all this and that. <laughs> so imagine a dark room lit from above. Folks as far as Czech Republic came to give you their love. <laughs> Your heart is beating like a goddamn drum. It's singing, I'm going back to Indiana. Indiana, here I come. The tension is building. The roof's gonna blow. This ain't a rehearsal, it's the motherfucking live show. Mice rolling, cameras on. Dice rolling, Scanlan's song. No more cajoling, this shit is on. This crowd is bigger than my cube like dong. <laughs> But what's it gonna take to give you some sack, man? How about 2,400 critters chanting, Vaxel Dan, Vaxel Dan, Vaxel Dan, Vaxel Dan, Vaxel Dan, Vaxel Dan, Go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. Oh, shit! What is it? What is it? Oh, God. 29. <laughs> Scanlan. From that? Yeah. That Scanlan. was inspiration to me? How he's much? He's inspiring you because he's he thinks wrong. you're going to fucking fail. Because I love fail. you, buddy. <laughs> 39. <laughs> so, Scanlan. Scanlan, I want you to go and make, make, a, make a perception check. <laughs> That's a 12. <laughs> I instantly dive and grab Keyleth's eyes and cover them and turn her away. <laughs> Stuck, get off of me! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Why your your hands are a little clammy? Oh God! Why are you sweating? Why are you nervous? You're nervous. Very, a very strange display from Vaxel Dan. However, your drink is available for you at the table. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that. good stuff. Good Man, stuff. I just feel invigorated. <laughs> All right, so as you finish the drink, you blink your eyes. Bro, mm. <laughs> come here, bro, come here. I'm going to ask you, Scanlon. Yep. Who, who do you see first? Oh, oh shit. Let's see here. What do we got? Six people over here. Oh well, yeah. You, you have two that have that have dove off to the side and are currently. Oh uh, okay. Uh, currently then I'll roll the D four. One, two. Oh wait, it's just three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the fucking four. <laughs> <laughs> two. Okay, Keelan. <laughs> Well, no, Keyleth Ke is being wait. shielded right oh, now. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, then it's just Vex or Percy? Or wait, are or those Grog? two too? Grog or... or, or uh, the, per or the other people in the room right now are Percival, Vex, or Grog. Okay, well, then it would be Grog. Or Vex, wait. right? Or Vex, yeah, or I'm going to say that I... Do I have three choices or four? You have four choices. Four choices. All right, and one, could you raise two, your hand three, if you're one four. of my choices? Okay, <laughs> one, two, three, four. It's Percy. Yeah! 
So here's my question, Scanlon. Uh, first and foremost, let me, let me pull up. <laughs> Is there a saving throw? Filter of love. Right, no, I'm, 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 I I'm sure it there's you a saving like. throw, but The I next don't time make you it. see a creature within 10 minutes after drinking this filter, you become charmed by the creature for one hour. If the creature is of a species and gender you are normally attracted to, turducken, you regard it. You regard it as your true love while you are charmed. This potion's rose-hued effervescent liquid contains one easy-to-miss bubble shaped like a heart. Just How Even long does it last? An hour, you said? One hour. An hour. An hour. All right, and I guess my next question to you, Scanlan, is based on your journeys and travels across the lands of Taldore and beyond, how adventurous have you been in your various <laughs> <laughs> exploits? A human man? That was teenage years, but maybe. <laughs> much further than that since then. Then as you glance up into the beautiful eyes <laughs> of the white-haired master of white stone, his, his white locks gently curling at the tips from, a, from an afternoon of sweating amongst the heat of the volcano, his fingers gingerly caressing the outside of the goblet in which he's enjoyed his own wine. <laughs> find yourself impossibly attracted to your once ally, now direction of your affection. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's the wine talking, but... <laughs> oh, man. I feel something I've never felt before, Percival. I... That sounds like the wine talking to me, man. <laughs> I, uh... I've just never seen you in this light before. <laughs> your, your, your eyebrows. <laughs> They're, I want to lick them. <laughs> they just seem soft and. You want to what? I don't, <laughs> that came out wrong. What I meant was, I, um, what are you doing later? I walk up and I palm Scanlan's forehead and slam him to the ground. Ow. What the fuck are you doing? I'm sorry, it's just... Well, you've seen it. Continue. The way he, the way he oh, looks God. at you and everything stops. The way all sound fades away when he's talking. Oh no, that's just his silent spell that he got oh, recently. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way he cocks his gun. Oh. <laughs> uh, holds oh. it so firmly. It trembles just a little. With this. Okay, but then, okay. bang! Oh. <laughs> Just a gentle touch is all it takes. Would this be an insight check at this point? Y yes. Okay. <laughs> Please. Come on, person. Oh, no. No, it's not! No, it's not! Is it really? Is it really? I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel his forehead. I, oh. Does he feel warm? How long Does have you feel... felt this way? This is a bit... It feels like forever. <laughs> I'm... Uh... One song, glory. Oh, no. One song to win your heart, glory. Where do I even start? I don't know what's happening right now. One song from the pretty boy gnome. We fucked oh. up. <laughs> oh, man. Scanlan, I mean, I don't blame you. I, I don't. <laughs> I just, this seems to be coming out of nowhere, and, and he's married. 
this is true. to me, and I will cut you. All right? <laughs> Love knoweth no boundaries. <laughs> and even though there's a significant age difference between us. How, uh, how much of an age difference? I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> <laughs> also, why, why does marriage need to be so constricting, man? I mean, can't we just be free in this crazy mixed up world? I'm, 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 I'm not going to pretend that I'm not extremely flattered by this, and I am, but I, I, I don't know. I want to see you naked. <laughs> Scanlon, are you experiencing a bit of cotton mouth, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are your pupils a little dilated? The lights. I'm going to look into his eyes. Are <laughs> his lights. eyes dilated? I, I turned to Vax. What did you do? <laughs> Is it that hard to believe that maybe just someone finds me attractive? <laughs> This is all besides the point. We have a god to kill. God what to are kill. we going to yes. do about the god? Yes, no, we should talk. This we is should. beside the point. We should tra the strategize. I just want to step outside the game for a second to say that Sam Regal gave me a bullet to kill Travis Willingham with. And I have turned the gun back on Sam Regal. Well done. And shortly it will be my time to die. So. After this, this unique and unexpected display of overt affection, um, you find yourself sitting round table amongst the mansion to discuss over your wine and confusion uh, <laughs> what plan of action to take next in your journey to take down the Whispered One, the Undying King. I'm going to sit directly between Percy oh, thank you. and Stan <laughs> for all of this conversation. <clears throat> so, Lark, we rest. And then we go hunting? Or do we like try and rally allies? I Much cast Mage Hand you. to tickle Percy's <laughs> knee. I have a 23 passive perception, Scanlan. Scanlan, make a slight of hand it. check. 20. What? 20. 20 yeah, slide of hand you, you see him starting to make his fingers over towards your boy. I grab his fingers and start to bend them backwards. <laughs> I just whisper in his ear, do you want to keep playing your fucking lute or not? I'd prefer it if Percy did. <laughs> Sight, but now, so not first. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll try to keep it together. I'll just think of gross things. Uh, Victor's ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they so singed? <laughs> All right, okay, okay, let's focus up. Damn it. Let's focus, focus up. up. Damn it. Okay. 
Go on, strategize. <laughs> time, we don't have a lot of time. So what are we going to do with it? Are we going to get <laughs> allies? Are we going to talk to Allura again, Gilmore? Oh, wait, uh, first things first, do we know where he is? Don't you have the ability to like? Oh, yes, he's still in the same place. Uh, I don't know in here. I need to shove my head out the door. For well, a shove sec. your head out the door. Mm. <gasps> All right, as you emerge into the heated air of the, sub, the sub-ocean volcano, you take a moment and concentrate, and you can sense uh, the direction and distance seems to be approximately the same. He hasn't moved at all. Right. Uh, make a perception check, I guess. Uh, 24. 24. Uh, you take about five minutes or so to concentrate, and while the distance and direction is relatively the same, there is very faint movement. Am I able to feel gradual coming towards where we are, away, anything like that? Uh, from where you are currently, which yeah. is in the volcano, right. it seems to be east and south of its previous location. Where would that move him towards? Towards Vasselhan. Towards Vasselhan. Solid. <coughs> <laughs> We should maybe go to Vasselheim in the morning, start to rally. Yeah, should we do, do Laura and, and Gilmore and Kima and everyone, do they know what's going on? Have they sent word? Well, we've, we've sent some word out to the world. We, we sent messages so. to Terry and to who else? Uh, there were two messages Terry, sent. Terry, the Ashari, Kaylee. Um, Kaylee. I think. We activated the, the beacon. We yeah. activated the, the chaos orbs. Uh, so. Crisis orbs. Oh, we sent so we should rest and head to Vassalheim. We're not any good to anybody at the moment, so I imagine so. <laughs> I, I think we'll all feel a lot better after a night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Scanlon, where are you sleeping tonight? <laughs> In my room. Do we need to post guards outside? I have all the guards I need. Don't worry, I'll be safe. We're not worried about you. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be great. So we're going to sleep and then yeah. to Vasselheim? Yes. We rest and then we go. I think that's the plan. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. All right, finishing your wine, you all scatter to your various rooms throughout the mansion, prepare yourselves for an evening's rest and a morning journey to the cradle of civilization, Vasselheim. I, I do set a bucket trap at the door just in case. <laughs> Just in case I set a bucket trap. Okay. As I, everybody's trundling up the stairs, I, I catch Grog just alone for a second and say, let this stand as a testament to how much I love you. <laughs> and sorry that I shaved your beard. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have to kill you now. <laughs> Give him a little pinch on the cheek. Oh, Grog, you couldn't if you tried. <laughs> now. <laughs> Good night, big guy. Night. All right, you all find yourselves in your chambers. Uh, anything else we should do before the evening comes to a close? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I know we're trying to get to other things, but magic compels me to put on my best silk G-string. <laughs> <laughs> and it compels me to use the series of tunnels that interconnect all of the rooms. <laughs> oh, shit, no! <laughs> <laughs> that, o that only I know about. <laughs> And it compels me to sneak into Percival's room in the dead of night and crawl into bed with him. All right. <laughs> Make a self-check. I'm self -check. in the bed, you motherfucker. Are you in there? 
You're married. Yes. married. I thought Season. it was like the 50s where you had two <laughs> twin beds. I love Lucy. Have you seen their gold pile? <laughs> Well, then I guess I better be extra stealthy. Yeah, you better. <laughs> Make a stealth check. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Eight. <laughs> With a slight jostle, Vexalia and Percival, you both pop one eye open and glance over as what you thought at first might be like a small child crawling into your bed. <laughs> Scared of a midnight storm, instead find a magnificent, <laughs> silk-adorned, familiar gnome <laughs> trying to wedge himself between your bodies, which is impressive based on oh, the spooning position you're already in. Let it happen, let it happen. I reach underneath my pillow. I grab a small copper ball. Manners. <laughs> oh, yes! Oh, yes! 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 Oh, my God. All right, and that's a, that's a, a strength ability check? Or that's a strength, a strength check, check, I believe. Just a check? Is it a check or saving throw? That's, that's the distinction. Uh, where is it? It's a, the yeah, cube, yeah, the cube just doubled in size. Throw. 10. Oh, no. With a rapid series of clicks, whirs, and grinding of metal, you watch as a metallic exoskeleton unwinds from the sphere and wraps itself around your body. You find yourself suddenly bound and held in place and able to shift as these, these cold metal bars wrap around you like an exoskeleton. Scanlan, short halt. Tell me now why I shouldn't feed you to trinket. I, I undo the lock so he can talk. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's happening to me. I just... <laughs> I know that this is your marital bed. Can I at least watch? I promise I won't look at you, Vex. I won't look at you at all. I'll just be looking at Percy. I'm going to would close. I'm going to close. <laughs> that something is wrong. I mean, you something is wrong. I rolled a one. You. I don't know anything you, is wrong. <laughs> you make I an insight check I did. on this. I, I, what am I making? Insight. 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 Okay. Now that you're like up close and, and definitely discerning his behavior. It's fucking A. I rolled a one. I rolled a... <laughs> it's, a it's a 12, <laughs> but I rolled a three. I mean, you so. get the sense that something's off and different, but you don't... Can I nature. Try? You, you think it may I be a you think it may be a practical joke or he's just trying to fuck with you. All you I know? have is like I mean lesser restoration. Unless you're fucking with me, I'm gonna try lesser restoration. Or we could just go to his room and defile his room. <laughs> I mean God only knows what's happened there. Here's but. the thing, darling. If something is wrong with him. And this is so out of Why character, so I'm afraid something is wrong with him. Not that you're not completely desirable. That's all I needed to hear, go on. But he needs a good night's sleep, and I'm afraid he won't get it in this. All right, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try lesser restoration on him. I'm not sure if it'll work. Okay. In case, any, in case this is magical, I just want to leave you with something. <laughs> not, don't do that anymore. Excellent. <laughs> All right, you, you, you extend your hand and complete the incantation under your breath and begrudgingly administer a lesser restoration spell onto his body. You watch as his gnomish, gnomish form suddenly flashes with a brief uh, burst of, of divine energy and as it subsides, his eyes blink and stare back to Percival with the same longing lust that he had when he entered the room. <laughs> wow. It's 12. Fuck, I got nothing. <laughs> Scanlan, seriously, this is not acceptable. Go to bed. If we let you out of this cage, will you go to bed? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm gonna send Trinket to your room with you and he's gonna sleep on top of you <laughs> so that you will go to sleep. 
Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Manners. All right, it, it unlatches itself and re reforms into the iron ball that you carry at your side. Scanlan, as you fall to the ground, kind of clasping uh, the floor with your hands and knees, breathing heavily, of his fingertips, um, based on the making your way through the tunnel, stealthing in in this moment, it's right about now that the file wears off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh... Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Just a birthday prank. <laughs> Is it your birthday? No. <laughs> oh, got the date wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, need to change. <laughs> I have jizzed in my pants. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, too much information, thank you. Have a good evening. Good evening. <laughs> do you walk out the main door? The, or the main door, door, the main door. Okay, so you do in fact trigger a bucket. Oh! <laughs> yes! Yes! Bucket. With a viscous powder that I mixed up that's basically just a flour base, it's going to be a real pain to wash off. Oh yeah. you, are, you are a ghost white, yeah. bucket-headed gnome in a silk G-string. <laughs> Why? Why did you do it? For the lulls? <laughs> See you in the morning. <laughs> I'm going to block the secret passage. I'm going to shift some some furniture. And by the way, when everyone asks me tomorrow on social media why I did it, same answer. <laughs> <laughs> this was good. Well done, you. This was, this was After some disconcerting conversation between the t the married couple and uh, a shameful walk back to your own chambers, you eventually find yourself coming to rest for the evening. After a full night's sleep, you uh, find yourself with your spells restored, your hit points restored, uh, half of your hit dice restored, and an embarrassing morning breakfast before you. As you all come down to a fine vegan breakfast meal, uh, there on the table, you all have a conversation, start plotting and planning, and you hear the gentle footsteps of one slowly approaching Scanlan to the breakfast table. Hey. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> didn't sleep a lot. Sorry. Hey, Percy. <laughs> Hi. What distributor do you get your wine from? <laughs> <laughs> just for f few, just, just curious. Talk about it. <laughs> so Vasselheim, huh? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So cool. finishing your meals. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Vasselheim. You're, huh? you're going to Vasselheim. How are you doing that? Okay. Okay. Do we do we have a, do we have a plan before we get there? Before I, I you know teleport us into a middle of a city that might possibly be in the middle of a war zone. Why don't I go see how much uh, progress he's made and I stick my skull out the uh, door yes. again and see how far he's gotten. Okay, make Have a perception check. Very good. Uh, 30. Okay. Listen, kind of listening to your senses and focusing on the direction. Uh, still traveling, still in a relatively slow pace as far as like the general distance, but it's making headway. 
has traveled throughout the night a number of miles. We should at least prepare Vasselheim then. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't obviously gotten there, right? Well, if, and if the wrath of the Dark God is on its way, they should probably prepare themselves. Yes. And also, I'm assuming he's traveling with an army? We would assume. Uh, with okay. one eye each. Oh, God. What okay. if Vasselheim is his show of power? That would be bad. Be likely. Let's hurry. Hey. Where to in Vasselheim? Uh, how long would, do, uh, would it take us to get out? Oh, wait. We chartered that boat. Do we care about those people? Oh. <laughs> wow. Are we just going to leave them in the middle of the ocean? Did we pay? No, 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 no. They only, yeah. yeah, only yeah, going to wait for us for a couple days, and then they were going to head back. Yeah. They would assume we'd run. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Fair argument. Yeah, yeah you, you gather that probably when they drove a, a bunch of down. yahoos up in the middle of the ocean to dive under a volcano in the ocean that they did not expect you to return. Yeah. <laughs> we did put a $500 gold holding deposit mm, on. We're not going to get it An deposit. incidental that we will not get back. It's going to ding I your credit. I think the destruction of the world may be more important than 500 gold. I know. Quick, cast lesser wow. restoration <laughs> on yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, it'd probably take us a while to get up and out into a tree, right? I'm just kind of being a little selfish with my like upper level spells. No, no, no. I feel you know? it. I feel it. Yeah, it's just yeah. We can find up, a tree. It's up and out to it, like up the volcano, <laughs> up the water. Oh yeah, there's no finding a tree. Okay, you know what? Don't worry about it. Let's yeah. go. Let's just plane shifts. Yeah, it's an arduous up journey back to any possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> Wanted yeah, to talk yeah. that one out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I plane shift us to Vasselheim. <laughs> All right, so you plane shift to Vasselheim. Yeah. As you guys encircle your hands again once more, Keyleth, you focus on whereabouts in Vasselheim. Any specific Trial place? Forge? Or M Melora's tree, maybe. Residual, residual yeah. magic. Yeah. Nothing we'll real. We'll never know. We'll Trial never know Forge. We lost. Okay. Trial Forge. Trial sure. Forge. Where will you not get arrested? Ah. I think we're a bit No one's that. gonna even notice me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like they were all ringing the bells and running around and getting prepared and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and if and if for some reason somebody's like, that guy punched me in the face. We'll just punch them. <laughs> I agree with this plan. Okay, yeah. yeah. Trial Forge. Trial Forge. All right. With that, you close your eyes. Beneath your breath, you in recite the incantation. With that, you feel your body suddenly sucked into a dark void and thrust through the absence of space. And within a moment's time, before you can adjust to the sudden cold and dark, vacuous void around you, your feet hit hard ground. Your eyes focus again to the light, and you glance around in the center streets of the, uh, not actually directly at the Trial Forge, but in the, ooh, we got music playing. Oh, that's cool. Um, in the streets uh, around the Braving Grounds, you can see the smokestacks from the Trial Forge just over the distance. Uh, you also notice that the sky above you is deep, dark gray clouds. It's as if there is a perpetual Clips almost placed upon this ground. You look around in all directions and you just see this, this roiling uh, gray cloud cluster that just encompasses the entirety of the sky above you. What should be mid morning or midday, uh, it's blotted out by the storm. Rainfall is absent and you see flashes of lightning occasionally framing strange shapes in clouds, whether by illusion or by a trick of your mind. You swear you see shifting dark, darkness and forms and images in the clouds. Giant faces silently screaming hundreds of feet across that extend and push out of the clouds, then draw back into the sky. Massive hands that push against them, only to slowly recede moments later. You blink and they're gone, leaving you unsettled regardless and uncertain as to whether or not that was just you or if everyone can see this. 
As your focus shifts from the sky above, you look around and you can see bastions are stationed all across the perimeter walls of Vasselheim. Uh, you see a uh, large ballista mounted and armed as watchers scour the distant horizon at all sides, looking for any sign of something in the distance making its way towards the city, based on the warning you previously gave. Unlit beacons sit at every major structure and juncture of the stone walls, awaiting the burning sign that an assault is spotted. Militia and armored guard move with haste to stations across the city quarters. You can feel the air of war permeating the streets. The streets are far emptier than you recall, with stragglers returning to their homes with carts full of rations, produce, and weapons. Fear grips their face as they pass by. You glance off to your left and you can see a wiry old man in the corner, his tangled silver and blonde hair bouncing with fervor as he shouts out, The reckoning of our opulence has come! The gods are away and the price of our hubris comes to consume us. But no one's paying him mind. His tattered bones just jangling his knees across each other as he makes his way through the streets, his face just a glance of utter despair. You notice an argument between two bastions and a middle-aged bearded man who is painting a familiar symbol on his front door, not too far from where you stand. A five-year-old girl cries and clings to his leg. What do you do? What, what is the symbol? Uh, make a perception check. I'll make a perception check. Let me see if I roll a one again. No, that's much better. Uh, uh, 28. Glancing at this distance, you see a familiar and striking shape. It is a haphazardly drawn circle with a dark reddish purple paint and a small line and a pronged fork. Aww. Four prongs painted up against this wall. Oh hell no. What is that? He's painting it on the door? The guy in the city is? The, the, the father figure. Yeah. It could be to pass over the house. Yes. Or... Pass over? That's the Vecna symbol, right? Yeah. yeah. Sensing the distance of Vecna, he's still far to the northwest of here. What was once a few hundred miles is now short of about 200 or so and getting less and less. Should we go up and talk to that guy? Maybe, maybe one of us, maybe not all of us. You there! As you make to the shot, you see the soldiers are currently arguing with him. One says, you welcome this rubbish. Are you one of them kook believers? Father is just angrily sitting in his face, says, You mind your business. I have no love for this, but if these dreams are true, I must protect my family. Dreams. They turn and look at you as you approach. What dreams? The soldiers kind of take a step back with a look of recognition across you as you step forward with your white dragon scale armor. They know not to approach, and it's that there is seemingly a sense of knowing who you are, at least, from the legends that are told amongst the streets of Vasselheim. The Father turns to you, and seeing your lordly approach and, and a strong voice, immediately, um, there are nightmares I've had, and I'm not the first. This, this symbol, it, it scares me, but if something comes like they say it is, I must let it know we have no quarrel, to leave my family be. This symbol will not protect you. How do you know this? Because I know his followers. They won't have mercy. They'll gouge out eyes, remove your hand, and make you one of them. Make a persuasion check, please. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, 17? <laughs> okay, he, he looks at you for a moment, his eyes keen, the fear in his face. You're certain of this, my lady? Yes. Will you protect us, then? We'll do our best. That's what we're here for. He looks past you, the rest of your companions, all looking well-armed and definitely capable. Looks down and kind of rubs the hair of his little girl, her sandy blonde hair, kind of curled up and a bit dirty, looking down from her gaze up to you. Trust you. And he takes the 
tattered paintbrush she was using and immediately just smears across the symbol, destroying it. All right. Come, Dear Gloria. God, I hope that works. He goes inside with his daughter. Before he closes the door, thank you. Please help. Pulls the rest of the card in and closes the door behind with a slam. <laughs> the two guards kind of awkwardly look at each other and back to you. And thank you. Be safe, and they both wander off. <laughs> I don't They've think gone they noticed you, Gog. Man, I'm fucking slick. slick. <laughs> so, knowing your location, you're not that far from the, uh, the Quad Roads juncture between the different areas. Um, you can go further in the into the, towards the Trial Forge, or back towards the center of where the Quad Roads meets between that and uh, where the Platinum Sanctuary and the Platinum Dragon section is. Uh, there is the, uh, the temple to... Saren Ray, where you left Pike previously. What do you wish to do? Is the crazy guy, the crazy zealot still running around? Yeah, he seems there? to be just kind of scattered through the streets. He's maybe 60 feet above, still sh shouting obscenities and weird doomsaying prophecies. I, I walk up to him. Okay, as he's shouting this time, he will come, he will destroy us. Phew, he will destroy you too. I, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. I believe you. I've seen it, too. Good. And save yourself. Run. Uh, Run far. Wait, wait. How, how did he talk to you? In my mind, in my dreams, he comes. He says, he says it's inevitable. The clouds, they come as the first warning. The first seal broken. The sky has already left us. The sun is gone. Uh, okay, yeah, no, accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beware the undying yeah. king! And he goes okay, to run yeah, off yeah, okay. Yeah. He, is he already gone? <laughs> He's running away. Uh, man, I don't know how to deal with that type of abrasive maybe, personality. Yeah, maybe, like, You're better. It's Sorry. best to, like, let people not give him power, because the more people believe in him, the stronger of a god he becomes, Definitely. right? Definitely. Definitely, right. but that guy resisted. He he like knew, he but others did. didn't. So right. so, and, and he was crazy. <laughs> Could you maybe make the sun reappear? Um. Whoa. I, I don't know. Can I can I do like a nature check to see if this is like above my capabilities or if I could uh, counter it? It's definitely an unnatural <laughs> yeah. form of weather pattern. Um, you get the sense that this is itself kind of a minor miracle. Um, a minor of, miracle? Minor miracle. Of, well, yeah, the, the sky that stretches beyond all sides of the horizon is of similar strange roiling cloud doom. Is it like Ghostbusters? Yeah, Ghostbusters. It's very similar, yeah, like, like we're talking top of the tower, just curling ink clouds out to each side. All right. Traveling with vast speed in almost all directions. You see no plain, single path in which they're traveling. They're just emanating. This seems like a minor miracle. Yeah. yeah. Can you miracle more? I I could maybe try to to carve out just a, a patch of sunlight above us, but it, I don't think any, it would be anything more than a morale boost at this point. If we did it at a temple, perhaps. Yeah. He's, maybe above the Serenray temple. He's bearing down on us. We need to tell Pike. We need to warn the authorities. We need to tell Let's the go. Temple of Bahamut. We have to Slayers keep take. people from defecting to him. It, the, the more people that he has, the more of his symbols that get spread around out of fear, the more he'll win. Right, but right. we can only either spread the word that we're going to resist or spread the word that it's about time to fight. We can only do one or the other. Yeah, he's coming. Let's do both. One way or another. Oh, uh, I, I turn to one of the guards of Vasselheim. Uh, one of them's rushing past. He has like a cluster of spears and a one Sir, on. sir? Yes? If there was a universal sign of, of Vasselheim, <laughs> a symbol of Vasselheim, or a sign to fight, what would it be? 
I mean, there is no universal symbol. There are many symbols in Vasselheim. All, all the various divinities that lie here have their own symbol. Uh, okay, I just didn't know if there was like a rally or a cry or something that you all universally believed in. There's got to be something. A symbol Va of Vasselheim. Vasselheim is a divided and united city as well. All right, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Jeez, your politics. <laughs> Okay, gives, you know what, let me... Oh, no. a strange glint of a glare towards your larger Goliath friend. <laughs> and right as he begins to squint, you hear a voice off the distance go, Lieutenant, we need you! Right away. And he rushes off with spears under his arm. Thanks, Lieutenant. I'm so close. For yeah. nothing. Okay, let me just, maybe, maybe as some sort of sign will help them. Um, yes. Let's do it at, let's, let's, if we're gonna make the sun appear, let's, let's do it at the, the Temple of Saren Ray, or the all right, Temple all right, of Paylor. Let's go to the Temple of Saren Ray. Let's go okay. see the Pike. You, you make your way to the temple, you enter the interior, and you can see most everyone's in kind of silent prayer. They're all kind of either holding hands or kind of clutching close the smaller kin, uh, these renewed worshipers of the Everlight. Um, glancing around, you don't see Pike currently in the vicinity. All you see is one, one of the head priests, uh, uh, Coraline, is currently off at the side, is tending to a few folks from the interior. Pike! Coraline looks over and sees you guys enter. Oh, oh, uh, Rushes up to you. I, I'm sorry, she's not here. She, she went to the Platinum Sanctuary. Apparently Platinum there's Sanctuary. a, there's a, a discussion, a meeting of some kind. Oh. Right now? Well, right now. She left not but an hour ago. Okay, go, go, go. We yeah, need we to go. go there. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> so walking up the endless stair along the side of the mountain that signifies the northern end of Vasselheim you see small units of silver and blue armored warriors of the platinum dragon descend past you rushing and kind of giving you a sidelong glance as they do a nod of recognition as some of them recognize you upon your approach Eventually, through an exhausting ascent and seeing the clouds growing darker and darker, you begin to see that there is, from this vantage point, a very slight shift in the direction that seemed to be coming from the north, northwest. Uh, you eventually reach the base of the massive pillars that mark the stronghold's entrance, where you've been a number of times before. You immediately notice a crowd of mixed attire. You see scale bearers standing tensely along various bastion members. You see uh, warriors of the Dawn Fist in their gold and red robes. And you see soldiers of brass and sapphire. The Hand of Ord is here as well. Now, upon approaching the guards, the guards at the front gate see you and expectantly signify for the front gates to open with the shifting <coughs> The two large marble doorways open inside, just enough for you to pass within. You enter the central chambers uh, of the inner sanctum of the Platinum Sanctuary, where the marble halls lead to the familiar circular forum chambers where you last met with the High Bearer Vord, uh, the Silver Touch, who stands there before you among his guard in heated discussion. The room is lively with representatives of each temple clustered behind their highest lord. The red-robed, dawn fists of cord flank Earthbreaker Groom. Philosophers gather near holy curator Curtis Ulias of the Quadrons and the Rathis. The glade keepers of the Birthheart stand behind the high hierophant of Fira. While the dark-veiled maidens of the Raven Queen gather, leaderless as is their order. Pike stands at the edge of the council, trying to listen in, before seeing you and rushing to your side. Hi! Hi, <laughs> Rushes in and just gives a few quick hugs. Did, did it work? Did you do it? Yeah, yes, we got, we got the stuff. We made him. Good. Things are, things are a bit tense. And as she turns, you see now at the back of the council, 
Towering over most others, and without armed support, stands the dark-skinned, beautiful Jaman Saord. <laughs> Their simple clothing swathed in a loose-hanging robe of gold and sky blue. Jaman's smoldering pupils shift in your direction, and they give you a nod of respect. The discussions halt as you approach, recognition also falling across the room, at which point the uh, high bearer Vor turns to you, saying, Vox Machina, what a gift of timing. Have you anything to aid in this crisis? Like so much. <laughs> <laughs> then please, take the center of the chambers. I believe everyone here could use some form of good news. He steps back, and as the rest of the guards empty, they open the central space of the chamber for you to approach. Let, let us remember. Well, technically, we've already been observable, so there's yes. very little that we can say that he doesn't already know. I mean, he's listening right now. Yes. How much do you know already? We have only taken a bit from what your companion here, Piper of the Everlight, has said. You went off to a volcano. Yeah. Scold seat. Like. And we defeated it. You defeated the volcano. No, that, no. <laughs> kind no. of. No. Look, I'm sure you've realized by this point that Vecna has ascended to godhood. As he begins to speak, uh, immediately the uh, high hierophant of fear steps forward. Yes, the dreams have spread. Right. We've seen and spoken with the clerics all across this land, and it seems that a new force has shoved its way amongst the rest of the Pantheon, though apparently closer. He's not reached his full power yet. The only way it will happen is if he claims a, a great use of power. He yeah, performs a, a miracle or so. He needs followers. He's on his way here. The more followers he has, the more power he has. At that, when you say he's on his way here, you watch as Groon steps forward, arms still crossed. How do you know he's coming? Have, well, have you? I'm. I mean, you could just look outside. Kill, yo, hey, oh, oh. I, I just. Whoa. Take it down. I, take it, take it I down. just, just, but. We don't with, need the sass. Yeah, with with sass. respect. I'm not sassy. <laughs> with respect. Though there are those of us among us that, that cannot tell where he is moving. Yeah. I am the paladin of the Raven Queen. At which point two of the the maidens behind you say in unison together, that he is. And the visions we've seen as well. The pretender god, his words channeled through prayer, speak of a new terror. A vile tyrant unchecked. Believe him, his words are that of Our Lady. And both of them step back once more. Mm. Creepy. Have you met Did them they say before? it in unison? They say it in unison, yeah. Sick. Are you friends? Do you know? Are you like on the same mailing list? <laughs> they all kind of look similar. Oh, okay, okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, he's got like this ability, you know. To she like... has granted me knowledge of his whereabouts, and he is coming fast. Vord now speaks up from behind. Good. Then let us gather our resources. The esteemed Jamon Saord has agreed to lend aid and resources to our defense. At which point Jamon speaks up. This threat stretches beyond the borders of Asilra. The clouds darken even our desert skies. If this specter of the Age of Arcanum has indeed ascended, as the clerics here are convinced, and it is a threat that we of Ancarel cannot ignore. Vord then turns his head frustratingly to the east and says, And King Bertrand Wendell has declined aid, claiming that until this rumored scourge arrives on Dwindalian soil, it is of no interest to the crown of Wildmount. No resources can be spared chasing whispers. We have sent out scouting parties, however. As you said, this threat seems to be coming from the northwest last you came through. 
and Wyvern riders are seeking the location of this Tharam Thala. At which point, there's a flash of blue arcane energy in the back of the room, and everyone seemingly turns, the guards, the weapons drawn, out ready, and you spin to see a familiar blonde-haired mage with braids on the side. <laughs> A bit out of breath, and in the same flash behind, a golden armored halfling. <laughs> of sun kissed skin and long golden curling hair, large weapon dragging behind. <laughs> Alora then, hand up in resignation, staff to the side. We are merely here to offer counsel and communication. We mean no harm, nor to bring our arcane knowledge to your quarters, and I apologize. But extenuating circumstances require strange bedfellows, I think you will agree. However, at the first sight of threat upon Taldore, understand that we will seek your assistance with haste as well. Imon and the Council cannot survive another catastrophe. So, we are here to be hest, and ask only your rate of return depending on when or where this assault strikes. There's a bit of muttering amongst the crowd and some grumbling, but High Bear of Ward nods. We are in need of aid and as many friends as we can get. You are welcome, Arcanist by Sorta. Alora, does the sky look like this in a month? It, in the past 12 hours or so, has stretched across the Osmid Sea and now seeks to consume as far as the east coast of Taldore. If this is what I believe it is, within the next half to full day, the entirety of Alexandria will be under the shaded sky of Vecna. Well, maybe the miracle thing is just the change in weather, and <laughs> we'll be okay. <laughs> Not all miracles have to be deadly. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> will you be there fighting with our armies in the front line? We will. I guess my only question is, do we wait for him to come to us, or do we try to take the fight to him? I do not wish to fight him where he expects it, as we are a city that has prided itself on its impenetrable defenses. I can guarantee you that this entity has seemingly procured or cleverly defined some way of breaching. I gather he would expect less us bringing it to him. So, we hope to have information on the whereabouts of this city directly. What else do we have? We have the knowledge that we can't take him by surprise. What do you mean? He sees everything. He hears everything. Yeah, he's been spying on us for quite some time now, little Fact, shit. I would, wouldn't be surprised if there's a spy in this room. Or at least an open ear. You have citizens of your city that are starting to paint his symbol on their doors out of fear. This is the last thing you want in the middle of this crisis. All time spent with any volunteer hands need to be from any spare clerics who can help calm the minds of the afraid. He looks out amongst the rest of the crowd that has gathered here in the center, in her sanctum. Her words speak true. If he is indeed seeking to undermine the worship of this city, and as such, break the defenses of our great creators. And we need whatever strength your temples have here, calming the people of Vasselheim and beyond. If you think he sees all, I think he sees the city as a ripe audience. At this point, you watch as Ford steps forward, kind of fiddling with one finger.
long ago, this grand temple nearly fell to the prying minds of terrible mages. This here, and he pulls a ring from his finger, is called the Band of Shrouds, a powerful implement of the High Bearer to shunt these prime magics aside. I lend it to you for the coming struggle. He passes it over. King. <laughs> <laughs> to Vexalia. Yes! <laughs> Kept close enough to the one who wears this ring. I doubt even his newly born eyes could pierce it. Whoa. However, oh, oh. it will only affect those nearby. So, if you are to strike, perhaps it's best you do so away from his vision and we distract. So, so like he can't hear us right now. Everyone in the room kind of takes a few steps closer <laughs> to you. <laughs> <laughs> But only if, only if you seem good. Within this chamber, it seems so, yes. Oh. Oh. It feels so good. So, I, I think that would look better on your, your middle finger, darling. Oh, mm. good call. Yeah. <laughs> At which point, so smart. the doors in the back of the chamber burst open <laughs> once more, and you watch as two armored figures come rushing up out of breath. <sighs> you see as... These two wyvern riders, recognizing their armor with the horns and the large uh, dragon-like build of their armor and headpiece, uh, looking damaged and splashed with crimson, come charging in. One of them, the helmet is removed. You see a young man shouting through his wounded breaths. Hi, Bera! Hi, Bera! Rider of Thetis, with Rider Marley, returning from beyond Moldaya in the Todusk Pass. We found the dark city. Everyone immediately begins to mutter beneath their breath. The voices begin to rise as the high bearer puts his hand out to hush them. It lies within a valley a few miles into the Zenwick Mountains. <coughs> Our team attempted to infiltrate, but an unseeable barrier protects the city grounds from all sides. We found ourselves overrun by errant magics and winged beasts of shadow and hunger. Only Marley and myself survived. We were only a scouting regiment. At which point, the High Hierophant steps forward. Zenwick of all places. Curious indeed. The High Bearer turns again. Very well. If this is true, we must mobilize our forces very quickly. Barun steps forward once more. We can push our ground troops along the, gr the grass walk road towards the range. Allura steps forward to join the conversation. If we can choose some elite select numbers for an on-site assault, I can transport them. At which point, the curator, Curtis, steps in. You will do nothing of the kind. It is arcane perversions that enabled this madman. And we will not allow... Ophira steps forward, putting her hand in front of his face now, saying, We have druids who are familiar with the woods surrounding the base of the Zenwick Mountains. We could transport you to those trees, a number of you, for an initial assault while the rest of our ground forces assemble northward. At which point the wounded rider speaks up loudly. I am not done! Oh. My apologies. Only Marley and myself survived with one of our wyverns. As we fled over the nearest mountaintop as fast as we could, Marley saw and the other one takes her helmet off, and you can see, just caked with blood, one eye kind of swollen shut and a giant wound across the face. I saw the city move. Part of it. It moved, I swear it. I heard a rumble over the winds, looked past and back over our shoulders, and I saw the city begin to rise. Silence takes the room. I would like any of you with a fair amount of history to make a history check. Mm. <laughs> what's, what's a fair amount? 
if you feel confident in your ability no. to understand history. I would say putting it this, those who researched the lands, that would put probably Percival and Scanlan. Okay. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have, I have to. I'll make part of this a whisper. <gasps> you make what? Wait, you make what? I didn't hear a it. Live a live whisper. There are two places in the Zenwick Mountains that would be of any interest or historical lore-based <laughs> uh, elements. There is the crypts of Thomara. It's a subterranean vault city built around a precious metal vein uh, cluster by the xenoph uh, xenophobic dwarven Fomara clan in the early years of the Age of Arcana. Jesus. It's said a terrible madness fed into their greed, leading to eventual cannibalism and collapse of the society thousands of years ago. It's now considered cursed and is largely avoided. The other location is known as the Stilted Vale, or the Silted Vale, my apologies. A small, cold valley within the mountains that is comprised of ice-dusted, mineral-rich mud that was once rumored to carry natural healing properties when applied to wounds and restorative elements to aged skin. However, a large variety of dangerous creatures also discovered these features over time and moved into the valley, taking over and establishing a new, violent ecosystem based around the soothing muck. Scan. <gasps> <laughs> hey, me too. Very true. <clears throat> okay, so the Crips of Thulmer. Live, Critical Role Live, Box Machina t shirts. The, the Crips of Thul Thulmer? Thulmer? Thulmer. Thulmer? Okay. Is that what he said? In the Silted Vale. Thulmer. Silted Vale. Yeah. Silted Vale and the Crips of Thulmer? Yeah, the bench of the two places in. The Zenwig. And one is like icy valley, the other one is like what, zombie dwarves? Yeah. <laughs> Can yeah. Cannibal zombie dwarves. Angry, angry icy terrain <laughs> okay. or cannibal zombie, zombie dwarves. dwarves. Okay. So, at this information, Vord nods. All forces are on high alert for impending attack here. Wyvern riders and air units, we need eyes on the Todusk Pass. In case the city is indeed moving, as they say, the High Hierophant will aid in transporting advanced scouts to the base of the Zenwicks. We would wish you be part of this if you are willing and able. Gathering information and seeking weakness to exploit are the key. Vox Machina, you are a focused stealth strike force. Oh, it is yeah. our own <laughs> uh, We're mostly really good at that. Mostly. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We're pretty if good you that. indeed carry the boons that your Lady Pike has mentioned, then we need to keep Vecna and his force occupied to grant you entry. And we can do that. And I certainly hope, with the strength of our numbers, that there is no way that he can see you come. <laughs> On the distant end, of the central chamber here. A familiar voice echoes throughout the hallway. Oh, but I do. <laughs> Worm groveler. But the ring, man. But the ring. We just got the ring. You haven't attuned to it yet. Oh! With that, we're going to go ahead and take our break. Come on! What all did we say? What didn't we say? Shit! <laughs> so, a piece of shit! So, we're going to take our break here. Oh, we'll God, return at that moment here uh, in a number of oh, wow. minutes. 10 minutes? 15 Whoa. minutes? What are we doing? 15. Uh, you'll know when, when the lights start going and Don't we'll have go people far. out there no. to let you know. Hi. It, wow. it, it, it won't be too terribly long. We need to get bathroom break and stuff. Anyway, be back here in a little bit, guys. Wow. We'll see you for the next oh portion God. of our We genuinely time. can't see you in the lights are on.
because it's like trinket. It's like a trinket cake. Yeah, but thank you, it's gorgeous. Really, right now? I'm rolling with someone's lucky die that I got delivered. Okay. Yeah, it's warm, I'm already very warm. It's a little cold up here, that's okay. One. All mine. Who are we missing? Why? She was just here with the She's bear. a moron. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, thanks for coming to the show. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Yeah, that's not over yet. <laughs> All right. Larkin is in the hearts and minds of children. Oh, are we up and running? Are we going? Let's we do this. Again? <laughs> Who's getting proposed to? All of us? No, we I need, think it was Liam. Sam. Sam. We need Brian Foster to come out here and talk for 20 minutes and get the crowd hyped again. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. Yep. <laughs> All righty. Uh, Looking in the back booth. Are we good? Are we online? Yeah, Perfect. Shit. Welcome back, everyone. So, as the inner sanctum chambers of the Platinum Sanctuary stood silent at the recent arrival of the Vision of Vecna, hovering but two feet off the ground in all his lich-like glory, his toothy grin is immense, threatening to crack the sides of his face. As gasps filled the chamber, armored warriors thrust spear and blade towards his illusory body, arrows and spells passing through harmlessly and clattering and splashing and exploding against distant pillars across the room. The smoke subsides, and he stands there untouched. Quite the tea party you've gathered here, Vort. I suppose celebration is in order. After all, you missed my rebirth day. I have something to show you that I'm quite excited about. Don't rush the surprise, friends. I'll bring it to you. Do not fret. You're all gathered here in one place. <laughs> it would be a perfect place for an ambush, wouldn't you say? But where's the fun in that? There are so many less protected loved ones to send my shadows to. Your daughter, Desir, Earthbreaker, trains alone at the Bozon Caves. An easy target. Vord of the Platinum Dragon. Your family lies behind the double-sealed doors of your estate. I know your secret cellar in the great protector of Marquette's jewel is away, and your studious concubines are left without their guard. Not to mention all of Whitestone or Cassandra. Young Valora Vissar now plays with her owl bear doll, all alone in her room. At this point, Alora shouts at the top of her lungs, That's enough! <laughs> and with a wave of her hand, dispels the illusion with a flash of energy. <laughs> causing it to fade, 
leaving only the lingering, omnipresent sound of Vecna's chilling chuckle. <laughs> then silence takes the room. Vold, does this need to be attuned? <laughs> it does. Why would you take it off? I was gifting it to you. I didn't realize he was going to show up in my sanctum. It's okay. I'm However, just going to sit down and just... Just keep talking. I'm going to try to attune while that's happening. Okay. Ophira, right. Ophira steps forward. It's a distraction. A bluff. We're close and he knows it. The board then turns to her and says... I will not abandon my family. Vecna knows too much. We have no more time. Those who are primed for assault, it begins now. Vox Machina. How do you wish to proceed? Well, we can't tell you. I think we, we proceed by taking a 15 minute nap, really. <laughs> what? Wait, did you just make a decree and then turn to us and say, what's your plan? Yes. <laughs> oh. You think I haven't heard tales of your chaotic battle strategies? Yes, exactly. I chaotic. cannot attempt to ascertain the nature of how you've survived the trials you have. So I leave that entirely up to you. The rest, we can handle, organize, and strategize. You do that. You do that. As you take a moment and rest, the rest of the individuals there begin to talk amongst themselves. The other leaders begin to set their clerics and warriors and sending out orders to the various temples across all of Vasselheim and beyond to prepare themselves, some for the defense of the city, and some to make their way northward to wherever Thar and Fala will be found head on. While this happens, and you're currently attuning to this ring, yes, you guys I'm begin to... Yes, I'm unattuning to Bracers of Archery in order to attune to this Okay, ring. so you're removing the Bracers of Archery and you're yeah. tuning to the ring. Okay. So that's two less damage on your uh, range attacks. Do you have a card? <laughs> That the I can ring? see. Do you have a card she, uh, wants, she wants that paper. I want that paper. Get that paper. The ring card Get is that in paper. my hotel room. <gasps> but you will have it next week. All right. <laughs> but essentially, what it does is it, it while it's attuned to you and on you, uh, within 60 feet of you at all times, divination magic is inert and cancelled. And what's the name of it exactly? Uh, it is called uh, the Band of Shrouds. Also, the hotel printer was broken. Just yeah. Look, even just yeah. getting my sheets printed out for this game has been a whole ordeal. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> as this is happening, and you guys are kind of amongst yourselves figuring out what to do, and the rest of the crowd is murmuring, um, you hear the footfalls. One, another, another. The approach of Jamon Saul. <laughs> My warriors defend this city, but my strength also lies in the front lines. If a distraction is what you need to succeed, there are few things as distracting as a shining dragon. I will fly with the wyverns once Vox Machina has been delivered. And the delivery shall be among the wings I bear, if you'll have me. Oh, yes. Dracarys! What? Woo! And they give a bow and a nod. Has it been, wait, has it been long enough that it's, like, it's tuned? Not yet, no. Shit! <laughs> uh, the rest of the people are gathering around. You guys, are, for the moment, are kind of just focused inward. Pike's there with you. Um, there is a tension being cast around, but right now they're letting you strategize before you bring what you have to the table, because right now they have nothing until you have a strategy. All right. Uh, we have, uh, we know of two places to go to up near the something mountains. Yeah, should we? Zen Wake Mountains. Let's, let's, oh, I mean, let's hang for a moment. I just don't want to talk about it just for like just a little more time. 
Sure, we'll definitely stay here then. Yeah, just chill. Yeah, definitely yeah. be we're here on the we're whole time. Just, not you know what? We what should go do? shopping. You know what? No, yeah. fuck that. We are not shopping. No, it is. I'll quit. I'll no, quit. Gr- I'll leave. It, no, Grog. No, it's just a. It's a. It's a. Maybe we should just give up. A you know wink. what? What I is wrong with you? No, let's give up. Give She's right. We should give up. Well, first shopping and now we give up. What the fuck? No, you know what? <laughs> Right, I'm really worried about our family. We should all yeah. split up and go be with our families right yeah. now. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe we should time. convert. I should just stab myself in the eye right now. Maybe you should. Yeah. Maybe we will. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do that. Praise to Vecna. Praise, pr- praise, praise Vecna. Vecna. What the fuck? <laughs> Take it back now. <laughs> good. No, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Shh. And I start pushing Whisper slowly. <gasps> what are you doing? Okay, seriously, that's too hard. It's too hard. It's too hard. It's too hard. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Don't do that. Sweetie. Don't worry, you he don't... can't be killed. Just like all of us can't be killed. <laughs> Jamon, I'm coming with you. These people lost their fucking minds. Do not worry, Grog. Be patient. I think there is more to their words than you are. Un- sit down. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of brevity, as everyone is kind of cautiously waiting for the ring's attunement, eventually you feel the energy click as the rings has been slipped on for this time, and you feel this kind of slight shimmer of cold wash through your body and extend outward, at which point you know that the ring has finally been in tune. All right, yeah. we can talk freely. Holla. Show, it, show it to us. How does it look? It looks fucking good. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite nice. It looks great, Grog. Yeah, quitter. Okay, so fuck Vecna. We're not for Vecna. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I do. Change of Excuse me. So, we have two options, right? What are you saying, Scanlon? The Crypts of Fomora or the Silted Bale? The Stilted Bale? I don't think the that was close. Bale. It was very close. I thought it was a Silted Bale. It's a Bale. It's a Bale. Silted, silted Bale in the Crypts of <laughs> Smora. Fomora. 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 Fomora? Fomora? Yes. Sure. Thomira. We know a general sense of where we're going. So, wait, we're going there, why? Well, it's Those are the only places that we know within the Zenwick Mountains that have any sort of uh, appeal. Passage. Okay, so we just choose between those two as like our strike place? Yes, one of them is filled with crazy dwarf cannibals. <laughs> and the other one has ice mud that can heal you. But has turned violent because nature is angry. The, it, uh, the druids are just dropping us off at the base of the mountain. We don't really know where either of those things are. So maybe, you know what, maybe it's best that we don't let anyone else know where we're going. All right, including ourselves. But did he already... <laughs> <laughs> Worked before. I like that plan. Yeah, because that way it'll all be a surprise. Didn't he already hear our no. two options? Did he? Did he? Did he? Was it after he... We don't know. I don't, I don't know he? what else oh he heard. Oh my god. No, here's the thing. <laughs> I don't know what he heard. I don't know how often he listens to us. I don't know any of that. Man, how does it work? Does he have like several like lines open and he just like switches back and forth? I don't forth? know. Does he have to actively listen or yeah. is it like a passive thing? And like how yeah. bored is this guy? Right? I mean, that's the thing, like, I mean, he's building an army and trying to take over the world. Yeah. I can't imagine he's listening to us all the time. Yeah, he's just trolling us. In my opinion, the gods are generally bored and looking for things to do. Yeah, but him, he's doing things. Yeah. Like, he's got shit to do. I'm personally thinking that an undead army of cannibalistic dwarves would be very appealing if I were uh, starting a assault on a city like this, and I would be heading my city in that direction to 
raise a bunch of undead cannibalistic dwarves. <laughs> it's kind of my vibe. So you, uh, Percy, you want to go burn them up? I feel like that's where we're going to find them, and that's, I think, where we're going to find them preoccupied. Mm -hmm. But if we know that that's what he would do, then wouldn't he know that we would go to find him at what he would do? You're assuming that he's going to do what he would expect us to think he would do in the first place. Do we know what kind of creatures are in the icy veil? Do we? I mean, could there be ice giants there? Would Vecna want ice giants? Or like undead icy zombies? Exactly. Also bad. I mean, there's an entire ecosystem of very dangerous monstrosities that exist there, which means there are living and dead, and, you know, like an elephant graveyard of various aberrations and elephant terrible creatures. Shit. Well, look, if there are undead cannibal dwarves or whatever in that, the crypts, don't we need, like, clerics to deal with them? We have yeah. a cleric. Let's take her. <laughs> Pike? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> are, are you willing to leave the temple now? I'm afraid for my people there, but... I, f I feel I can probably send myself with you like I have in the past. It's kind of all or nothing, Pickle. I feel bad abandoning everyone that I brought to the temple. You aren't abandoning them. You're, You're shielding them. them. I mean, you could always do like the astral projection-y thing, right? That's that what works. I was thinking of doing. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, but here's, well, okay, but. <laughs> if you're astral projecting, I mean, aren't you like just like chilling in one room here, like not really communicating anyway? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. We're very I don't lucky. know if it's we for have, Pike or for the DM. We I don't have know. A bit of a, <laughs> God so we, damn it! Wait, let's see. Blind spot. We have a bit of a roving blind spot here that we could use. Thirteen. 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 Oh no! But this can't be the only thing that determines if she's an astral projection or she comes with us. My begging has to count as well. She. <laughs> She destroyed a whole undead army being a like l yeah. laser light beam. Yeah. She's, you know. That's right. She but will her like, yeah. Will everything work like normal if she's an astral projection? Yes, it will. I'll yeah. tell you what. Astral to a judge. Girl. I'll tell you what. If you're so you're eager to bring Pike along when Ashley can't play, you guys want to Jaeger her? Because I don't want to. Yeah, we'll totally Jaeger her if we'll she's okay with her. it. But there's okay. also the thing. Remember, we've talked about this. There's also the thing. That if she dies while Ashley's not here, we're fucking assholes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Okay, that's very true. Yeah. She won't die if she's just like a, a blah, 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 but thing. If she's an astral projection, can she still use like the champion's blessing that she got from Sarah so, right? and stuff? We'll find out. We'll find oh. out. Motherfuck. But do. we can always easily go, like, get her. It's the best we can do. It's the best we can do. Oh. <laughs> the dungeon master will remember that. <laughs> All right, so what? The crypts or the silted veil? One thing I can tell you about the crypts that you may not know. They're not man-made crypts. They're actually the inside of a fallen titan's body. How do you know that? I know things. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a, a pretty godly place to go. Oh, shit. To make a statement. Are you telling me... Are you telling me we're gonna have to crawl into another monster's asshole? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> It's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have two immovable rods. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I got weird. All right. All right. <laughs> so the crypts. To the crypts, I say, but are we 
druiding there and then flying on a dragon or just flying on a dragon? Uh, Pikes, well, I'll, I mean, uh, I'll come with you if that's okay. Yeah. If we're, if we're going to this, we need to, we need to do this together. Yeah. I trust, I trust the city guard. And if it gets real bad, you'll take us back, right, Keyleth? What, what, what? If it gets, <laughs> if it gets real bad, you'll take us back, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then let's do it. And she puts her hand out towards Grog. Fuck yeah, buddy! <laughs> Um, it looks like most of the, um, the sanctum is now dissipating and heading out towards the front of the temple and going about some sort of structured exit to prepare for this assault. Allura. As she's standing by walking with, with, with Key Mother in, in a heated discussion with uh, what looks to be a, the member of the, the, the paramours of, of the quad robes, she turns, uh, Daxabad, yes. It's good to see you. It is so good to see you. I, I need, we need advice, we need help. Wait, there you go. When we fought Vecna, he threw us around like rag dolls. He held us. He did whatever he wanted. Do you have any way, anything, any, any suggestion for, for helping us avoid his grasp again? Because if it went the way it went the last time, we are fucked right out of the gate. What do you perceive as the, as the, the weaknesses you suffered in that previous battle? What was that? What do you perceive are the weaknesses what that weakness? you suffered in the previous battle? He was able to hold us magically. And there are ways to make sure those bindings don't hold you still. There are magics that can prevent that. And if your enemy is a strong magic user, as I know, he will use distance to his advantage. So close that distance and make it your advantage. I know not quite what he's capable of in his new ascended form, and that scares me. But strike quickly. Strike true. Everything you've got. Work together. Communicate. And anything you can do to allow yourself preparation and the jump on this fray, do it. That ring that Vord gave you, that'll be a boon enough. If you can catch him off guard, that might mean everything. Thank you. Do you know what kind of magic it is that keeps him from holding us? Just wondering. Like, you said there were kinds, but I just want to make sure. Certainly, uh, there are a few in your mists that can utilize. There's a spell called Freedom of Movement um, that can prevent being held paralyzed in that way, yes? That's good, that's good. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Because yeah. I thought that was what it was. I just wanted to double check. Hey, completely understood. Yeah. Well, shall we away, then? Oh. We have to go now. I'd like to. I'd like to come with you, but currently, with everything going on, if, to be honest, if I'm not there amongst the council, it's going to tear itself apart. Yeah. The skies, it is the people of Amana, threatening all sorts of insanity. I'm sure you've seen shades of it here in a city which has faith. And I myself am not completely absolved of the dreams that haunt many others. I'll be doing what I can to pay attention, but do note that ring also prevents me from seeing in on you. And I have to look out for Iman. Me and my lady both. And she turns over to Kima, who's currently in the process of getting into an argument with a wyvern rider. And you see her going like, Oh, come on, I can ride too! <laughs> it's like, have you ever ridden a wyvern? No! <laughs> but I haven't met a wyvern that I can't stare down! Wyvern Rider just turns around and kind of chuckles, and then he gets tripped immediately onto his face. <laughs> the crush of metal on the banks, and he spins over, and she kind of <laughs> spins around and joins Alora's side and goes, You know, I never really liked this place. Bunch of pricks. 
<laughs> Good to see you guys. You as well. That Holy Avenger getting some action lately? Oh, nowhere near enough. That's okay. You come back. And you and me will have a tussle. God, I love Kima so much. <laughs> awesome. So don't be all doom and gloom, all right? It's a promise. Stay alive. Stay alive. <laughs> Stay alive. She kind of looks up and Laura looks down at her and kind of just rubs the top of her head for a second. Kimmy kind of pulls away. Come back sick, okay? Mm hmm. I'm going to hold sure. you to that. You see, there's like a a moment of her kind of, and she just spins around, not wanting to show any sort of weakness of emotion. Laura looks back and watches her turn away and goes, you'll, you'll make it through this. I've seen you do great things. We'll try. And you'll succeed. You have to. many at your back. Look, and she puts her hand out, you can see now there's what looks to be at least over a hundred wyvern riders all scattered amongst the various mountain outcroppings that are all getting on top of their great winged beasts that are fully armored with wyvern barding and armor, and they're taking off in clusters and circling. They're all counting on you. They're going to make sure that you have the opportunity you have put those to good use, and she glances off to the side of your pouch, close as it is. Come back. And she turns around to go and join Kima. Give Gilmore a hug for us, will you? She stops and turns. I'll do that. I owe him a visit anyway. And if he has any trinkets that lend freedom of movement. <laughs> I'll ask. Tell him to say hi. I will. And I'm sure he does as well. Take care. Be safe. Come back. And she turns and walks away. Did you see that? See what? They think we're going to die. <laughs> yeah, they're right. <laughs> Safe bet. I feel pretty encouraged. Yeah? I don't know why. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> so, um, wh what exactly is our plan? Is it to try and keep Vecna from gaining more forces, or are we trying to cut off Vecna that and one. his forces? I think they're taking care of the forces, we're taking care of the god. They're the distraction. Then why go through the crypt? We think that's where they're headed. But are we trying to take out a potential additional force? That would be my fault. Yeah. That's but where I would go. Unless, I, I, is that not what other people are doing. I think that the surprise that he's expecting to bring to the city, possibly now, especially with the information that you brought, is that he would try and raise this creature and use it against the city. So he's basically wanting to raise a giant zombie titan full of, of zombie zombies. cannibal dwarves, and then he'll just like poo them out. It's like to fight other people. Somehow you make that less threatening. I'm it's not sure like how you do that. You know what it's like? It's like when you take a chicken, a duck, and you put it inside a chicken. <laughs> and then you put a chicken inside of a turkey. <laughs> well, let's, let's get going before he starts raising this thing. Let's Come fucking on. do it. It's a ducking of the dam. <laughs> are we... Here's the thing. Are we, are we relying on Grog to stab these... these Tremels through Vecna. 
or do we each need to deliver the one? What? If we can get all gods. three in in one swift movement, once what? we've weakened. It takes three separate attacks, I'm assuming, right? Or would it be like attack, attack, attack? Oh, you, you gather, you can't... Okay. Okay. So much sass. You gather by the nature of their enchantment and the sides, and with your, you can't just like cluster them together like darts and jam them into the board at once. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But it would be like one of those situations where you like, you would have to attack and then draw another one and then attack, right? If like, That's or, possible. Or, or three, three of us could each have one. That's right. They're right. big. Well, he mentioned he, he, it has to be, Vecna has to be severely damaged before Already we, before we even do that. There, yeah. have to, there, has, has, to be, the there have to be breaks them. in the avatar form for them to pierce. What? Okay. Like there, ha there have to be, have to be breaks, cracks. wounds, right. visible yeah. cracks in the veneer of the avatar for the actual avatar. trammels to pierce. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so we're 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 talking about doing this. Um, hey, DM, logistical question. Yes. How many days does it take me to make a th fourth level scroll spell spell scroll spell scroll fourth level? How many days? Say it a couple more times. Uh, Fourth level spell scroll. That's that's gonna be quite a while. That's yeah. that's like weeks, weeks, and weeks. Uh, weeks to do a spell. Weeks. That's a downtime what activity. What game has that kind I of time? I thought our whole deal was we're about to go do a surprise attack. We have to go. That's no, we do. We do. Now, we do. Yeah, right? We're saying we don't have time to make a scroll spell, oh, scroll, right, scroll, scroll spell. Scroll. Also, <laughs> from uh, Allura also just said like, yo. Plan, maybe plan a, okay. a little. Yeah. Also, DM, did we get told for these, for the trammels, for these harpoons, did they need to be wielded by the person associated to their gods, or can Grog chuck them all? Uh, from what you understand, there was no specification as no to that. It was more the, the, the fusing of the divine energy within the trammels creation yeah. grants it with the power. The means of delivering it doesn't seem to be as important. Go but ahead. it is a melee weapon. I mean, it might, it, it's javelin like, Seems like a javelin so it could be, yeah. be thrown, but, you know. Could be. We didn't make them to be aerodynamic, did we? Mm, they're they're so just aerodynamic by nature. Once again, you can certainly try. I'm going to pass the Paylor <laughs> trammel back to Oh, you. if I had the time. Oh, damn it. I have freedom of, of movement, but I, I have three fourth level spells. I mean, I can start burning into my, my fifth level spells as well, but... It lasts for an hour, so I was just trying to figure out if there's a way to... Pike says, I, I, I can also do it. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> and it's not concentration, right? So you can it's also cast no. Death Ward. It lasts for an hour. We'll wait so... till we're a little closer yeah. to this. Yeah. And it, Death it Ward lasts, lasts for eight hours? Which, uh, death Ward? Yes. <laughs> 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 They're both fourth level, though, so... Have to <laughs> These words are like all great and everything, but it's not going to change. We're going to have to make it up when we get there. So why yep. don't we just go ahead Let's and fight this Let's fucking go. Let's go. Right. <laughs> As you begin to descend down the stairs on the outskirts of the mountainside, you can see the Wyvern Riders have now gathered into two large units, and the distant uh, shrieks of wyvern calls kind of <laughs> begin to echo through the mountain range. They all begin to swoop towards the abundant terrace. Um, you guys follow suit? Sure. Yeah. All yeah. right. Word. As you make your way to the abundant terrace in the outskirts of the birth heart, there are the orchards, the large clusters of trees that you have traveled to and from before when traveling to and from Vasselheim at Keyleth's behest. And there you can see a number of the high priest druids of uh, Melora have all gathered around the High Hierophant, and they're preparing means of transport for all the troops, wyverns included, to those who are going to make it as part of this initial frontline assault. As you guys approach and watch, you see as other generals and such begin to gather their army units, they begin to discuss orders, and a number of them in the middle of this refer over to you guys. And you can see there's there's definitely direction being given in regards to you guys. So almost to stop their alarm. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be weird. <laughs> is it yours? Is no. it you? It's 
Oh, it, there's an actual alarm on the stage. Oh, oh, oh my God, there is! <laughs> when it turned 12 midnight, the alarm clock went off. It's not flashing. That's important. <laughs> Five Thank minutes. you, Allison. He just hit snooze, you guys. Yeah. Five, five more minutes, Raven Mom. Five, five more minutes. It was all a dream. As you approach, um, Ophira steps up. It would be my honor to grant you passage to the base of a mountain range. I believe your other companion is approaching soon as well. And she looks over past her shoulder as you glance, and you see uh, Jamon Saor approaching uh, within their arms a small leather chest, a container of some kind. Jamon steps up and places it before you and pulls it back, kind of backs away with a, uh, a brandishing presentation. What is it? May these potions keep you healthy. So, within here, there are eight superior healing potions. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're really in for a fucking fight, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when the game gives you eight superiors. Eight yeah. <laughs> um, so everybody take one superior, right? That's one Everybody gets of us? one. And there's one extra. Yeah. Oh, they are so fucking badass. All right. Superior. Everybody gets one and there's one extra? Yep. This is eight and you guys have seven in your party. I'm gonna mark down that Pike has one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And who's made it, who's made of the most glass? Who's gonna get hit the most? It's gonna be... Scanlan is important. Scanlan's super important. Scanlan should have Gets two. Guys, I'm fine. <laughs> I know, you're very fine and you're very capable. And also, karma is a thing, and I just really want to sort of balance the scales, so... <laughs> why, would, why would you feel any pressure that way? I mean... We've got a long road of history, you and I. Yeah, we're best buds. Best buds. <laughs> best buds. Met at Big Apple Anime Fest in New York City all <laughs> those years ago. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. <laughs> Or I'll take two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In Marquesian, I say thank you, Jermon Sol. Be pleased. We are. Very. Be pleased. Also, if you don't like the meat man, I can make him get go away. <laughs> <laughs> Your business has not encroached upon the order that we maintain yet. <laughs> You'd know if it did. They know. <laughs> they know. <laughs> the smoldering pupils that they contain within their darkened eyes just stare back at you with a curling smile. Thank you. Uh, let's go. We, we gotta get through this, uh, yeah. this druidy thing, right? Yeah. Ophira backs up and putting her staff to one side kind of makes a large oval shape with her fingers as she mutters beneath her breath. You watch as one of the heavy, thick trunks of the nearest tree begins to just tear and crack and pull inward. And there you see in a similar fashion that Keyleth's casting, though a little more uh, visceral, uh, an opening reveals itself and a doorway is opened and she goes, Quick, now! Ooh, I like your technique. <laughs> <laughs> you all rush through, one after another, being uh, flanked at the end by Jamon. And as you all approach the opposite side of this portal, you emerge in a somewhat uh, crowded forest of what look to be like pine trees. Um, immediately, the, uh, the northern air is colder, and you see drifting bits of snow fall softly coming through bits of the tree line above you. Uh, you turn around just in time to see the doorway close, and in the distance you see other doorways opening around you, different trees, 
and you watch as dozens upon dozens of wyvern riders and armored soldiers begin to emerge, one cluster after the next. Fucking druids are badass! <laughs> Let's do this. Um, you glance up and just can briefly see what looks to be the top northern crest of where the uh, Zenwick Mountain Pass is. Um, just past the, the, uh, the canopy of the Forester Inn, because you were sent to the base, of the very southern base of the Zenwick Mountains. Um, you're within a forest. What do you want to do? What does my Vector tell me? <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly enough, southeast of where you are. Shit. Oh, mother. How close? How close? I'd say it's probably close to about four miles from where you are. Right now. Oh shit! And slowly moving away. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I guess wrong. Four miles. Did we guess wrong? Where, where well, we don't know where this shit is. That we're Do we know where these things are? Where They're the... both north, north, west of where you are in the mountain range. He's passed them. He's passed over. He's passed over. It seems. Fuck. What do we do? Uh, uh, think, so wait. Think, if we, thinking, we if we man. get a little bit closer, I can do, I can do a commune with nature spell and try and figure out some stuff. That's all I got. I can scry. I mean, if he's already passed by the, the, the crypts, is there any reason to go there? I don't understand. What direction is Vasselheim from us now? Southeast. South. The way they're heading. Uh, anybody yeah. else think we should fucking hop on a big ass brass dragon and try and catch him before he gets there? <laughs> yeah. What are we gonna do here? There's nothing to do here. He wants to go fight Vecna right now. Either that or he just goes and sacks the city and we're like, what does this tree tell me about this area? <laughs> just, I mean, just, quickly, please, someone come up with an argument just that to be sure, counteracts we should, that. We should scry on the Dwarven City if we can really quickly. How? We don't know much about it. Do we know enough to scry? I can... I can scry on Lady Briarwood. Do it. Do it right now. Yeah, I bet yeah. she's with him. Deep dive. Or no. she's all right, all right, not. All right. Or she's not and she's a bitch. We'll learn something. Are you, are you zoning in on the city? Are you zoning in on Vecna? I only know, know where Vecna is. We know just to see what Lady Briarwood is. All right, scrying on Briarwood. Oh, she rolls. She rolls to make a saving throw. Spell DC is? 21. And I said, that is a 22. <laughs> Sorry. As you try and focus, the incantation Shit. completes, and as your vision begins to extend, it's blocked by darkness and sent back into your form, and you realize the scry has failed. The will is too strong. Can you scry on that Death Knight guy that was next to her before? Did he li is, is he still with her, though? Yeah. We didn't kill him. We did not kill him. We, we did not kill him! We did not hit him! We did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Vecna. Oh, hi, Vex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll scry, I'll scry on... Oh, hi, Vox, Mark. Undead <laughs> douchey. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> as your vision extends from you, it races through the darkness. You see dark clouds ahead, and as it fires down, you look instantly within looks to be the streets of Tharam Fata. You see the cobblestone roads now cracked and broken. You see buildings appear to have sustained some sort of structural damage. You see roofs are partially collapsed. And walking down the street, strolling with a number of undead soldiers at its back, the Black Knight you battled before. As it struts through, you watch as the towers and buildings kind of shake. What? Oh, and then no. shake again. Oh no. And then your vision returns. Oh shit. I was shaking as we put what? Oh, is it like on the back of some sort of like giant turtle or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 
we should it? stop that from happening. Let's go, let's yeah, go attack we're, it. We're you super lucky on. and it's just a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for us. It'd be yeah. so cute. Then there is no time to waste. Oh. You watch as Jamansa Ord's form shifts, and giant brass wings extend in a flash of reddish orange energy. <laughs> the nearby trees bend and break at the sheer force of the dragon's magnitude. Awesome. Their form expanding to fill the recent vicinity of the forest, and with a large guttural roar. You see before you the brass dragon. I guess I should get on. Shotgun. Yep. God <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. Hey, Keely. Yeah, while yeah. we're flying through the air, uh -huh. is it possible for you to give us a nice, inspiring speech? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's just our small group here. No one's watching. <laughs> you know us. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Man, inspiring speech. Is so we're on a brass dragon? It's, you, want, you can do it while you're all climbing on the back? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. They're, they're waiting patiently for you all to jump onto the back of the dragon floor. Getting on the, on the back of the dragon. If you need a second to think about it, it's okay. We can, we can start off first and then come back to you. Wait, what? Do you need a second to compose yourself? You know, Scanlan. <gasps> oh. It's funny you should mention that because I do need a second. <laughs> I have to think about my words deeply and a long time and even still they come out wrong and you're so witty and quick and you can come up with things like speeches and songs on the fly in front of thousands of people way quicker than I can. Yeah. It is not my strength, but I do know my strength. And I know each of your strengths. <laughs> but not as well of each of you know your strengths as well as you do. <laughs> What I'm saying is, you should believe in yourselves. <laughs> the way that I believe in you, Scanlan, mm -hmm. and the way that you believe in everyone else, Scanlan. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you're all strong and unique. And we're probably going to die. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay, let's. Uh, Fly ahoy! <laughs> With a slow. <laughs> With the slow metallic crinkling sound <laughs> of brass dragon scales curling, the large head of Jaman Saord's dragon form spins around to look you dead in the face, Keyleth. The same dark eyes with the smoldering, burning cores for pupils. The mouth opens, and you can smell immediately the breath that has a very uh, earthy, singed, kind of burnt wood scent to it. Ooh, cedar. <laughs> <laughs> and the voice goes forth. Very good, Keyleth. I found that quite inspiring. <laughs> and with that, you guys can all take your 18 yeah. temporary hit points from the inspiring hit points. How much is it? 18. 18 temporary hit points? And with that note, with one large push of their strong dragon wings, Shimansa Ord raises beyond the tree line up into the sky above, where you can see the clusters of wyvern riders have now also gathered to survey the territory. The first thing you notice, the southward wall of the 
tall rocky land landscape surrounding the fields of ice-dusted grasses that fill this pass. You can see the mountain range seems to have suffered an immense amount of damage. A gargantuan fresh rock slide nearly a mile wide, now resting at the base of the northern mountain. You can see actually swallowing and burying some of the forest land. And as you glance southward into the uh, Todesk Pass, you can see what appear to be mammoth holes in the ground, large craters of broken dirt and rock forced into dunes of mud and shale surrounding their outsides. The scars, pockmarks, 200 feet across, carved into the terrain. Uh, I'd like everyone to make an intelligence check, please. We're making a what, an intelligence check? Can, can I do a nature check? Sure. Yeah? <laughs> Is this an intelligence? Yes, is your intelligence modifier? 21. 21, good. Vax. Oh man, uh, eight. <laughs> Keila, that's good. I'm doing a nature check. Right, to find out. If the if it looks like a path has been bore through the in a straight line, like if they're okay. just going through for 24. 24, uh, what you can tell from a nature check is that uh, these are not natural formations in the ground. These are like blunt... <laughs> it, this is blunt trauma uh, to the ground that has caused these large craters Does in the ground. Does it look like a, a walking path? Like a very large walking path? Like a big thing? Percival? Natural 20 with for a 25. Yeah! 19 total. Okay. Percival. Yeah. And Keyleth. <laughs> and Persalia. Not you, Grog, sorry. Oh. You, you do notice, <laughs> upon immediate view, that the patterns are, <coughs> are the, the, these, these oh, large shit. holes, these craters are a pattern. Staggered about every 350, 400 feet. And they do almost present the gate of a walking creature. <laughs> Hey, you that's got a, that big fucking turtle that's you a want. Big turtle. It's a giant turtle. <laughs> it's the Stay Puff Mark. The from final me. miniature is just Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it has been foreseen. <laughs> do we see? I'm working on my costume. Do we see anything in the air? Any kind of like any of those shadow creatures in the air? Or is it just our wyvern? Make riders? perception check. How, how oh, big, oh, Jesus. Hey! Okay. As you lift up to survey more territory, you manage to get a brief view over the edge of that mountain range. Um, you do not see any of the, uh, of the gloom stalkers that you had previously faced near Thonamphala, none in the vicinity. It was only the wyvern riders and a few errant birds that normally take to the skies that are keeping wide berth from your sudden emerging army that has you know, joined you in the skies. But you glance over this mountain range and you look about, about two or three miles northward, you can see the same path of destruction that has torn through these mountain ranges in what appears to be a sinkhole. Um, hundreds and hundreds of feet across that disappears into darkness. How big? It, it, Go ahead. Is the sinkhole in the direction of the city that we're, that, that's moving right now? No, it's in the direction you guys were planning to travel. Oh, maybe that's where they ripped the thing out. It's where it came out. Yeah. So these, these, how big are these footprints approximately? Uh, the footprints, each one is... That's the fucking, it's the Titan! It's about it's a... It's the Titan yeah, of course it's the Titan. Titan. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized that! It totally fucking is, yeah. Yeah. And his name is Larkin. <laughs> So 
yes, each one of these craters is roughly 150 or so feet across. Oh, his feet are 100 feet across? But 150 to 200 feet across, yeah. Keyleth, how big would a creature be if it had footprints approximately 150 to 200 feet across? At least 100 feet big! <laughs> Probably bigger. Well, that's a nature check. Can I do a nature check to find out how fucking big this guy is? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. He's about there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's do this lucky one. Uh, 28. Based on your experience with various creatures that leave large tracks that you've dealt with or hunted in your history with the Ashari, um, (laughs) it's big. I mean, you know, the, the legs are generally pretty thick for a creature of immense size because it has to support all that weight. Um, but if, if it's if each footfall the crater here is about 150 to 200 feet wide, oh God. you can surmise the creature is hundreds of feet tall. Oh God! At least six times. I don't feel good. We are going to have to shadow of Colossus this shit. Oh. What did you? What did you say? What did you say? So we're gonna have to shadow of Colossus this shit. How are we gonna? something that's 600 feet tall. If it bleeds, we're, we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I don't know. <laughs> okay, all right, hang on though. Um, ca- uh, caverns, undead caverns of uh, dwarves inside the Titan. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we crawl up its butthole and kill the things inside. Yeah, ca- yeah maybe. Or the fight it from the inside That's out. The thing. Maybe. That's the most exciting Dwarven Forge thing I would ever want to see. <laughs> it's the Godzilla yeah, interior. Just, like, look down at his clock. You don't know. There. I don't. We gotta get inside of it. We don't. It may be all it, it takes is just. Are we on Jamon Solward's back as we Yes, yeah, so you're like, on it? like right now it's just large yeah. brass dragon wing. Never ending storying our way to, to a wow. terrible death. Never ending story. Uh, well, can you detect if we're making up any ground on your target? I'm talking to you, Vax. Oh, what? Yeah, so Liam, what's the question? Are we getting closer? Well, my brain's on Vecna, not on the station. Oh, so, that's right, yeah. yeah. We is were scrolling. Right? Is Vecna doing a ride along? Right. Uh, is he. Still moving the same direction. Yeah, I mean, Vecna's just Let's slowly traveling in that okay, well, south south direction. Okay, we gotta go after it then. Follow the tracks then. All right. We're already Shit. too late to go to the. With that, you hear the booming voice of Jamal once more. Very well, let us be off. Yeah. And goes into a fast-paced dive. You all grab hold. Whatever gonna... nearby dragon scale and/or loose bits of fur there are, as it drives into this huge dive, this gargantuan dragon. Um, Trinkets in the necklace for this part. I assume this side. (laughs) (laughs) Just holding on with his bare hand. Um, You see as the Wyvern Riders immediately take this action and begin to swoop in and follow suit as well, uh, following behind them. Uh, At this point, you guys are guiding. You are the tip of the spear of this assault at this very moment. Oh, God. You begin to... Follow though this pattern of impacts across the pass, heading south, southeast, heading over and through different mountain ranges. The higher you get, the wind gets a little more intense and the cold becomes more biting. And Jamon dips down a bit to avoid having to thrust you into this very dangerous stratosphere. The light in this area is very, very close to near dusk almost with how much the sunlight is just blotted out by the cloud cover that has completely consumed the skyline from horizon to horizon on all sides. I kind of do a bit of a, a gust spell ahead of us to kind of clear the path, give them a little bit more visual line of sight. Thank you. You hear emanate from Jamon as the cloud cover tends to spread a little bit and give a little bit of a, a good view. Um, you travel on for about 25, 30 or so minutes before Vex, Vax, and Keyleth. You glance around the bend of the pass that you've just begun to curve around, and you see it. An impossibly immense entity standing hundreds and hundreds of feet tall, a gigantic, bulky mass of jagged rock slowly walking on two castle-width legs each footfall sending a cloud spray of earth into the air around it. (coughs) 
quaking the surrounding lands with a terrifying crack and rumble as the back leg lifts. Sifting through the air, you can almost hear the air tear with a high-pitched whine, even at this distance, as its sheer mass and the speed in which it's cutting through and breaking the atmosphere slams down for its next step. <coughs> As you get a better view of it, the closer you get, it resembles the earth elemental form you've seen Keyleth take many, many times, only proportionally malformed and terrifying on a scale you've never seen. Four colossal arms swing from its torso, Fuck. battering rams of shifting stone, each over 150 feet wide. The closer you get, Grog, you sense a faint vibration in the Titan stone knuckles. Oh my god. Uh, just a note, these were made from the heart of a felled Titan. I you don't think it's that one, but... It could be! It could be! That one's yeah. dead! He it was, was dead. dead! I was sarcasm, but yeah. <laughs> Are you Does gonna take mean... him one-on-one? -on -one? Does that mean you can, like, beat him up from the inside? Oh yeah, I'll beat him up with his heart. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Well, do I... Do I... Uh, like, do, <laughs> do I notice anything? <laughs> Not in particular, just the, close, the closer you get, <laughs> you clap and it sounds <laughs> booming as it would. Um, just the closer you get, like there's this very, very faint vibration to them, uh, as if just proximity keys you in that. And even your simple mind grog can gather that these were probably crafted and made from whatever it is you see storming through that ravine. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is good. Oh. Do I feel Vecna riding on this guy's shoulder? Yeah. You sense the, the direction and distance of Vecna directly where this entity lies. I would like you to make a perception check, please. Do it what? Perception check. Perception check. Just him? Just him for now as he's focused. You glance past as your proximity grows closer and closer. One, you notice that there are what looks almost like a beehive type activity around the top of it, where its head would be. There is no massive head protruding, just a shoulder shelf where the top of it becomes these four arms. And it's faced away from you based on the way that it's traveling. These arms kind of swinging wildly with each step, slowly. Its, it's size is difficult for you to fathom at this distance. It seems so big yet so small, but as you get closer, you can see these, these bee swarm-like clusters resemble creatures you saw in the Shadowfell not too long ago. And there atop this shelf of its gargantuan torso, you see what looks to be a city line. Resting atop of this entity, there lies a portion Tharam Fala, moving with this gargantuan primordial earth type, That's not risen right. from below its long-held tomb. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna cast Pass Without Trace on us, it's not gonna make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna do it. I don't... Will that work on the back of a big shiny dragon? Just another note to be clear. These were carved from the heartstone of a ruined Earth primordial. And when they're doing their thing, they make me immune or resistant to fire, cold, and lightning damage. So, you know, that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so just um, uh, theory time, maybe. This primordial is marching with Tharamphala on its back to Vasselheim. Yep. If I were a god wanting to prove that I'm awesome and do like a big miracle thing, I would drop a giant city on top of another city. Or destroy the city Just and then the replace it with, with that one. That city. Oh. We can stop this though. 
All we have to do is beat the, the Titan. <laughs> I've got magic missiles that can do like 1d6 damage. <laughs> So with enough 24 of those, plus ones. <laughs> we could be in business. <laughs> listen, listen. I know it seems really dire, right? But the only other option besides attacking it, in my mind, is trying to get its attention. Maybe lead it away from Vasselheim. I think it's also, in theory, necrotic, which means it can be turned. I mean. Ooh. That would be one powerful fucking yeah, that's spell. A big we're going, we're right going to have to do something, but we may have to. How? Pike, well, how, how strong are you feeling right now? <laughs> you look back at Pike, who's clutching onto the back of Jamanta Ord, seeing this, her face just pale white, eyes wide, and she's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's all right, buddy. It's okay. You got it, you're a monster. I'm a monster. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a monster. <laughs> Should we land on the city on, on its back, or should we try to fuck up the Titan? I think we should, like, dive into one of the beehive tunnels and stealth in. I think we should still be stealth mode. Jamon can drop us off. Jamon, you distract all of the city with all of your wyvern riders as well, and we'll come in from the bottom up, yeah? Okay. How far are we I from I think that is a very sound plan. <laughs> However, oh. and as the dragon's head turns, look ahead and you can see some of these clusters. Gloomstalkers have now broken away from the Titan and swarming in your direction. You're, oh you're about, I'd say, a mile and a half away from it and gaining only because you're pushing at full speed, but you're seeing now them breaking off in the clusters and you hear the distant. I know we bamped out here, but do we have any idea how much time we have? How far away from Vasselheim we are? Um, from what you can tell, I'd say make a... Don't make me make it. <laughs> I'm gonna no, guess. I'm ready, let's go! Yeah, I'm gonna guess too, because he's asking out loud. Yeah, no. It's a good question. That's a good question. I know, uh, make a nature check. Can I, can I check hey. you that too? Hold on. Oh, okay, okay. Negative two! <laughs> that was my modifier, my modifier, so 15. Okay, oh. It was 17, I was excited. That's good, that's good. Not too bad. Um, <clears throat> you haven't traversed this area of uh, the north side of the Sierra before, um, but gathering based on where you were, seeing the, um, the sinkhole and the distance that uh, Maxodime was giving you earlier, you imagine it's probably about 200 miles or so away from Vassalheim. Okay, we got time, so. We That's a very yeah. wide gate with each step. Yeah, but it's like Godzilla, right? It's like... Yeah, <laughs> so you have time, but it's, it's, not, it's not 200 miles on a normal person. I mean, if we start skipping, we're fucked, but you know. <laughs> hey, Keyleth. Yeah? Do you one. still have any of that, that wild guide? Is that what it's called? That, that herb that scares away the undead? I do. Uh, well, I, I, I grab some so I can, I can cultivate more of it. You yeah. should probably do that, because we're about yeah. to hit up those... They're a uh, mile, a mile and a half away, and they see us, it looks like. Yeah, they're closing it's in. There's a short like time before minutes. they reach you. And remember, at this traveling speed, any sort of smoke-based sensor material you have it's is going to just go right behind you like a flare. Why? Can Why? we turn into clouds, Keyleth, and fly off of our dragon ride and then poof inside? Let me see what I packed. Yeah, because we, we, we be in the air, and not all of us are so awesome in the air. We could fall off this dragon's back real fast. Her. Okay. Ha um. <laughs> uh, we could do. We could do wind walk. It's gonna take an hour or a minute to transform in and out. I also have animal shapes. Yeah, Jamon, can you become invisible by any chance? Uh, Jamon, you hear the voice rumble. I can. Why don't we just do but that? But oh. only myself. I could maybe affect a couple of you. I could affect a couple of us. How many? 
you know, three. Maybe like Jamon, could you get like five? It, 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 it's I could muster about four of you. So one of us. That's enough. Would be visible. Three and four. No, I, I, I can't add. <laughs> or, or I could make Jamon look like one of those dark, flappy things, and make us look like. Undead creatures? They probably have seen us coming, though. They're on the They're way They're already here. on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're closing. Okay. Invisible, then? At least we're a smaller target at that point. I, I can throw out a fog cloud and try and fog us the rest of the so way. Just be you a have to fly through it. It won't work. Yeah, yeah. not hard be. We're in clouds! Yeah, but no, if you do the thing, we'll like just keep going through it. Trail. Invisible or changes, one or the other. We could do invisible, and I could fly like uh, as fast as I fucking can away. <laughs> okay. The cloud breaks ahead, invisible. and you watch as two bloom stalkers come diving no. down towards the back of Jamon. Let's do invisible. I take. Okay. I shoot one with an arrow. No, I shoot the other one with a gun. No. No, All right, invisible. both of you guys roll attacks, invisible. please. It's okay. Shit. We're going at a speed that it doesn't matter. Did that just happen? Yeah, I just oh, knocked wow. over a wine yeah, bottle. That's amazing. You mean it's a, not, a uh, grape juice bottle? 28. 28 hits? Uh, 25. 25 hits as well, yeah. And I was attempting to, to, to I was going to burn a, uh, not that I should have said this, I was going to burn a grit and drop. Right, I figured that yeah. was the case. All right, so one of them gets shot with an arrow, and as the impact hit, it shrieks, but continues its dive. The second one gets shot by, which weapon was it? Uh, it was Animus. With Animus, and you watch as the detonation of the of the, the kind of spray of black from the impact of the bullet hitting, and as it shrieks, its wings kind of buckle from underneath, and it plummets about 30 or 40 feet or so, and ends up falling out of its dive. The one, however, is still diving, and it's going to go for the one that shot it with its arrow. Okay. <laughs> Natural two. Um, that is, Wait, didn't I? Ooh, that's yeah, good. that that's going to be a 13. I'm pretty sure that doesn't hit you. Nah, that doesn't. So as it attempts to dive past you, you duck out of the way, still like notching yourself a secondary arrow, and its claws hit the back of the dragon scales instead. You hear the <laughs> scrape of it going across the back, but having no effect on the hard armored brass dragon's back. Yeah. As the, the boomstalker then shrieks once more, <laughs> it picks back up into the clouds and vanishes. Okay. Well, I did attack 15 of damage on it with it. daggers. Uh, I mean, you, you can definitely attack it with daggers if you'd like. Uh, yeah, that hits a 29. Yeah, it hits. Uh, that my friend the dragon is against it. Do I get sneak attack? <laughs> no. <I'm... laughs> Sorry. All right. Uh, that is a uh, 12. Just for that. Okay. 12 damage. Okay. How much damage did you do? 15. 15. All right. All right. As it shrieks and vanishes back up into the clouds above, um, you can see now the wyvern riders around are starting to charge in as well. And as you're rushing now, you're maybe three quarters of a mile from the exterior of this giant invisible, Earth Titan. Invisible, 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 invisible. All right. You complete your incantation in time with Jamon, and the entirety of, of your party turns transparent and is now free from visual perspective. Did you get everybody? Yep. Or is there one person left? I did uh, three. three and you four. did three? Math, yeah, I can do out. four no, three if Jamon can't. If Jamon can't. Oh. So that's one. all of us. No, that's oh. all of us. Yeah, yeah, Wait, yeah. Pike two? Well, Pike and Jamon would be eight. So okay, so I'll two. do I'll two, four, four and four. I'll do four. Yeah. Okay. Solid. And with that, you all manage to uh, disappear and go into a dive as soon as you all vanish, which is interesting because you disappear and suddenly your mount disappears and all your friends disappear. So you're just clutching on to what you hope is still dragon scales and fur as you just look down and just see clouds, ground, Mountains and eventual plummeting death yeah. where you not holding uh, on to the back of the I'm freaking out, man! I'm freaking out! Ah. Wait, if our eyelids are invisible, does that mean we can't even close our eyes? You can close your eyes if you But does that... Oh, no, it's too much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> not cool. I will say, because the enchantment doesn't make you translucent, it's just invisible to the visual oh, so gaze, then it actually works. the interior of your eyelids would not oh, be affected Oh, thank God. By okay. <laughs> so that's just I my much worst like, nightmare. Well, much like a, a Harry Potter invisibility cloak, you can still see the inside of the cloak somewhat. Yeah, no, I was just having that, that clockwork orange moment. I was just, no! Right. <laughs> okay. you make yourself more nauseous by closing your eyes. Oh, just saying. That's not true. As you go into this dive, you can hear the clashing of wyvern against 
Boomstalker, you hear the yelps and shrieks of two different bestial cries. You hear shouts of uh, humanoid and elven voices shouting as uh, spears are tossed, arrows are let loose, and this aerial fray begins. With that, you kind of glance forward as the dragon comes out of a dive. Uh, Jamal leading you towards this gargantuan entity. You can hear with further volume the slower than that probably based on the gait it has to walk and the speed it's going but it is it, it's like watching a mountain with legs move um as you approach uh what do you do do we see a clearing a landing is there like a hole in the purchase yeah. uh you can go ahead and make a uh make a perception check guys all of you are glancing nope eh. uh, 25 yeah. 30 24 Six. <laughs> Eight. Eight, awesome. All right. Rocks. Keyleth. Yep. As you guys, at this distance, it's hard to make out details, but Keyleth, you rolled a 30, which, according to the edition, is nearly impossible. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as a DC. <laughs> so, you glance about, and amongst the, the broken rock exterior of this behemoth entity, you can see towards the base of its right leg, towards the back, what looks to be a faint trickle of water. Like a waterfall pee. of pee, probably. A or very sludgy, yeah, a little like gross. A, a trickling of a waterfall <laughs> that's just uh, flowing from its back leg area and then just kind of dissipating as it plummets into the air. That's it? Yeah. It's coming from the city or coming from the Titan? From the from Titan. The titan uh, it's a he's leaking from the back of his calf. Let's go in there. From its hip. Let's, uh, from the back of his hip. Let's, uh, let's uh, see if we can land on that uh, first pimple then. Uh, I don't think there's any landing. I think there's might be a jump. going to be a... Yeah, yeah. Let, you know what? Let's, uh, let's see what happens. Let's, get let's fly in close to that yeah, waterfall. Okay, so you point this out to Jermon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You hear the dragon voice boom up once more. Hold on. Goes into an intense dive trying to bring... Because uh, previously you were about level, if not a little higher than Thorum Fall on the top of the entity. Uh, Jermon goes into a dive towards the hip area that you point out. The wind is pushing past you. You're... you're holding on for dear life, because any possible loss of grip not only is going to loose you from the dragon, which is going to be hard to find you, as you're all invisible, um, uh, well, depending on the dragon's abilities, I guess, um, but as, as you begin to push down into this dive, I want you all to make uh, strength saving throws, please. Oh, God, strength? Strength. Jeez. Oh. Natural 20. Yes. Natural <laughs> Natural 20. Well, uh, I got an 11. <coughs> okay. I'm using my first luck of the day. Oh, that's worse. Uh, that is a nine for me. Ooh. God, a 22 for me. Oh. I know. All right. This is like a and, group and, success or failure thing, right? You know, in, in, in almost a poetic justice way, both Vax and Keyleth begin to lose their grip, and with a sequence of moments, they both get blown off the back. They'll be fine. The brass dragon. <laughs> were they touch? We wouldn't even know. Were they touching each other? Tell we me they wouldn't were... know because we. Wait, are we all? No, we wouldn't you know. And you and Vax are currently now. Known. No grip on any dragon as you both reach out. Whisper! Throw my dagger at that sound. Roll an attack. <laughs> Roll an attack. Wait, what? That sounds like us. That sounds like us. <laughs> All right, go for it. That's smart. Were you saying you were going to come to me? Now roll an attack. Yeah. There's the 18. With disadvantage, <laughs> because she is invisible. Uh, that's a 20. <laughs> What's your armor class, Keyleth? Uh, yeah, I mean, he hits. All right, go ahead and roll damage. Armor class is 16. Good, so you can vamp to it. That's right. <laughs> uh, 12. 
plus psychic damage, honey. Uh. <laughs> you guys have a fucked up relationship. Yeah. <laughs> Our entire that. relationship has been psychic damage, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you take 14 points of piercing damage. However, yeah. as soon as the pain hits you, it's immediately elated by the immediate impact of Vax's arms wrapping around you for dear life. Oh, I'm, like oh. <laughs> oh. I'm kissing you already. <laughs> you both are now tumbling and plummeting through the sky. Do you want to fly or should I? Hold on, and I go giant eagle form. Okay. <laughs> The giant eagle form <laughs> takes flight as her wings extend. You, you realize you've been clutching on to kind of the, the under uh, down feathers, and so as soon as the form takes you, grasp hold and climb back onto the top of the giant eagle. And with that, you both. <laughs> now, here's an interesting question. Because invisibility lasts until you do an attack or cast a spell. It's a magical ability. I'm going to say because it's a natural effect, it will not affect the invisibility, especially at your high enough druid level. Because you, you're, you're, you're specifically shape changing is your thing. So I'll okay. say you just skirt under of what would reveal but invisibility. Would you? You lose it, however, for attacking her. So now there's just a, a vax kind of huddled on nothing, <laughs> full on like Wonder Woman style invisible jet, just like riding through the sky. <laughs> So, as you guys coast in, you, the rest of you hear Jamon go, It appears we've lost some passengers. <laughs> oh, and no, no, no. Now, oh, go, keep going. Go, go. <laughs> keep going. Uh, we're, all, we're all right. Everything's fine here. Everything's fine. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Jamon, they, they say they're okay. It's okay. We can go. Very well. <laughs> Continues into the dive. Uh, you guys uh, trailing behind at this point, but making your way down towards the base hip region of this entity, following the direction that Keyleth gave that her spotting earlier. Woo! Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh boy. As you guys get closer and closer, you can see there is indeed what appears to be a, a trickle of a waterfall that is just dissipating. The wind is so strong that it gets maybe... 25 or 30 feet down before it just gets scattered into droplets. Is it pea colored? <laughs> no, it is actually a pretty clear water. Okay. Um, you do also glance as you get closer that it appears to be emerging from some sort of an opening, like a cavern. Yeah, let's head for the yeah. opening. All right. It's just got a hot spring in it. It's a hot spring, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, So as you approach. Finally get the hot spring in yeah. Oh no. We have oh, passed without a trace. We have passed without a trace. You do. But the flying man <laughs> does not. So, as the rest of you make it up towards the side, and the wind is strong here, and you can hear the impact of each footfall so deafening, your eardrums almost shake and are pained with each impact. The base of each footfall is just immense. Um, but you do see there appears to be, interestingly enough, there is the, the waterfall coming out of it, and the waterfall is careening down what looks to be a broken stone staircase. The path, the path, the, the open, the opening is about 15 feet across and about 10 feet wide, and it looks like it was at some point attached before this creature rose to another series of tunnels or uh, whatever else, this dwarven stronghold, these series of vaults that were carved within this creature's body extended beyond its torso, and this is one of the breaking points. Wow. Um, as you glance back, and you can see your brother coasting down about a hundred or so feet away, you also watch as one of the large arms swings back. No, 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 no. I, I, I dodge it, I try and dodge it. Stop hitting yourself, stop I need both yourself. of you guys to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, shit. Actually, no. because you're riding Keyleth right now, it's going to be on the giant eagle form. You know, you're clutching just it. Roll it's a just dex on me. Save. It's just on you. <laughs> the giant eagle. titan. It's hard to avoid a hundred plus foot wide arm. I'm a nimble eagle. This is a save. Wait, wait. Oh, that's not wait, bad. Wait. 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 Wait.
as you see it coming. Yeah, I'll say you have the time because yeah, it's yeah. so immense. Hard. Add a d4, yeah? Yep. Oh, oh yeah! Oh. Okay, 24 total! It's not enough. Yeah. No! Oh. You were one away. So 25 DC because it's huge. This is a giant fucking arm. <laughs> so oh. both you and Vax. <laughs> I'm a, I, I don't have the dice for this, so I'm gonna have Take to use the app. You both oh. suffer 87 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh. As the force of a mountain slams into the side of your half elf and eagle form. Twenty you say you say eighty eighty seven? Eighty seven <laughs> points of poison damage, yes. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. No problem. Are you still Does, in the, does that mean you're I, not an uh, eagle? I immediately drop form and start falling. Okay, any carryover damage, make sure to mark that. Yep. Does yep. uncanny dodge affect this at all? <laughs> Unfortunately, because you're relying on her eagle yeah. maneuverability, 51. no. Okay. 51 carryover damage. Well, then I shoot the wings out immediately. Okay. She's still in. The wings emerge yeah. as both of you begin to plummet at, at this point. Hopefully. Um, I'm okay. Keyless. What? Um, as you're plummeting, Hang on, I the Vax needs you to roll perception Hang check. On, I'm doing math. Oh shit. <laughs> Jamon, they're fine. They told us <laughs> they're fine. They'll be here any second. Don't worry. We, we did see How? this happen, right? Uh, you guys are right now kind of like hovering by this and looking back and you watch this occur. Oh, okay, good, we saw this. You see Vax get smacked, fall, and then his wings shoot out. Um, Vax, roll a perception check. Perception check, great. Roll a really great. high. Come on, buddy, check. real high. Disadvantage. Roll a really high twice. Uh, what is that? Oh, I rolled the same thing. Uh, so it's a 24. Ooh! Reliable talent. Strangely, you're able to see a slight shift in wind to give you just a brief moment to see where Keelan's invisible plummeting body is. Well, uh, oh, I'm still so invisible. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you haven't cast a spell at any attacks, so you just you manage to see this brief shimmer in space where the wind kind of bends around her reverting form. And pick it up, grab it. You right. thrust downward with your wings, you grab away. her body, and manage to carry, you can feel her invisible body uh, below you as you bring it back up. Punch me in the face, punch me in the face right now. Good job! <laughs> <laughs> hey, beautiful. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> All right. Uh, another giant arm swings. Oh. What? But swings wide as it attempts to swing in the same oh. place it did before. It does not seem to see the two of you quickly approach the proximity of its torso, and you hear this Cut, uh, ah! passing over you by about 30 or 40 not feet. Not cool, man. Oh, oh hitting, trying to go for Jaman? No, it's just trying to go where you guys were. Oh, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the whole just way our friends are You going? guys do manage to, because you still have a visual point on it, so you kind of direct and tug Vax by the hair and ears in the direction of the path you saw. By the ponytail? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. That's kind of good. Oh. And there on the edge, you, you can see uh, Jamon Saor there, wings flapping as you guys rock it down and land right on the edge of the footsteps. There's about a five foot gap where the water isn't rushing past. Okay, okay, I immediately cast control water and suck it inside. Okay. The, wa the, the, wa the waterfall stops the and bends upward and it's Get now up. being held. You guys have um, <laughs> what appear to be a row of, of steps ahead of you that are safe enough to land on right now. They're still slick with water, but there isn't a rushing waterfall pouring over them. 
Can we see where to go to? An uh, opening? You can see it descends upward out of you. That'll okay. do it. Let's just go. Let's do it. Yeah. This is All what's right. happening. Ascend. This is who we are now. Jamon. <laughs> <laughs> They, they swoop down, and uh, their giant dragon claws <laughs> grapple onto the rock side of this large titan and leans forward, giving each of you the opportunity to jump a very short distance over to these steps as each of you make this leap. Jamon disengages and flies up. He says, I can only grant you so much, for I have many to watch out here as we distract he who resides above. However... Take this. And as the uh, dragon head rescinds, you see the eyes flare with energy, and he's going to cast Mass Cure Wounds. Ooh. Oh. I'm fine. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So as... as do, 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 do. Oh, two sixes and a seven, not bad. All right, this is 12, 19. Da, da, plus, oh, mm -hmm. nice. 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 The thing the with the dice. Yeah. That's going to be a uh, 28 hit points healed to both of you. Okay. That helps. That helps. <laughs> yep. Push. Yeah, as we, were, uh, as we were landing back, the gashes all over Vax's face uh, started to heal up a little bit, but not all the way, and then suddenly they went whoop, even further. Mm. <laughs> nice. Thank you. <laughs> be safe. Quite and well. see you on the other side. <laughs> See you on the other side of the water. <laughs> As you all stand there on the precipice of this opening that just falls off into a drop hundreds of feet into the rocky ground below, you can smell the cold wind blowing through these caverns emerging from this entrance you've found. As Keyleth holds back the flow of this river, you glance up at the dark, rising stairs deep into the body of the Titan amongst the cursed vaults of this dwarven city, long abandoned, and begin your trek to eventually meet your final conflict oh. with the Whispered One. And that's where we're going to end today. Oh. Yeah. This is a little surreal. Oh, Big time. Um, there's some people. There's some people that we really, 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 really want to thank really fast, and yeah. it's our crew, and it's the people who help put this on for us. So we want to thank. I have a list, but I left this backstage because I was too involved in what was going on. Okay. The house lights up. Danny yeah. Sachs, Courtney. Ryan, uh, Rachel, Ed, Jamie, Danny, Ben, Chris, Chris, Fernando, Jojo, Audrey, everybody who, there, you guys, it takes, yeah, it takes literally six months to put one of these on, and the amount of work and heart and love that our crew has put into this has been incredible. You guys are incredible.
Thank you for waiting. Thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. Don't worry. It's almost Thursday. <laughs> Good night, Jack. See you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah, Matt. Get some sleep. Thanks so oh. much. This was a lot of fun. Tell them about tomorrow. We love you. So just a reminder, guys, if those of you who will be able to come to the signing tomorrow, we'll see you there. If you can come at least to pick up some Scanlon stickers, I think they'll be worth your while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post some images of what they look like. I think you'll be happy. It's time again. Fuck yourself. It's high time you got the fuck out and went to sleep. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Oh, that's actually a good question. That's a real question. Uh, sorry. I should trigger warning on that question. Um, oh, the signing is at 2.30. It looks like yeah, it begins at, at 2.30. Um, also, I have, yeah. Tickets is three? Lucas Oil Stadium. Is it three o'clock? Lucas Oil Field Stadium. My Field. schedule is wrong. Please Pay attention to uh, Geek and Sundry Twitter for announcements. Oh. Anyway, guys, yes. thank you so much for coming. Hope you had fun. We had a great time. You've done. I hope you brought two gallons of hand sanitizer with you. <laughs> we love you guys. Good night. Good night, kids.